Welcome back to the Manchester Major. As promised, we return with yet another best of three for your visual pleasure. Only we've got Fear X versus Bleed. This is going to be a big one. The winner, go I love these games. The winner goes through, the loser goes home. Everything is on the line. It really is, Tim. Everything on the line again. We've been treated to two elimination matches today. We've already seen Fear X come through victorious Huge out of upset. their elimination match said. against G2. For anyone that didn't watch it or hasn't seen you on heard socials, that right. you have heard it correctly. Fear X did knock out the mighty, or I guess not so mighty at the moment, G2. And they will be going up against Bleed right here, right now, for that spot inside of phase two. And we look at the age old question, don't we? You know, which is best? Bleed have had a little bit of time off. They now come into another game, they've had a rest. Or is it better to be Fear X? Just sort of back to back, straight into it. You're warm, you've been warmed up, you're going straight at it. In terms of where it's going to be played, we've got a bit of Oregon, we've got a bit of Clubhouse. This is looking very, very default. We've got Shally as the decider. What a set of maps. I am so excited with that X. Um, Clubhouse, I know, was one um, that was a, a real sort of battleground between Bleed and SSG. So that's definitely one for Fear X to watch out for. I'm very surprised that Oregon has been allowed through, given that it's Fear X's number one map yep. choice. Now, obviously, it's a default map. Everyone's expected to play it. But they're on a nine win streak here, Tim. This is incredible. They played it as recently as 27 days ago. So it will be to the end of their stage. And I think coming into this, you've got to give them credit for managing to squeeze that one through. On the flip side, if we look toward a team like Bleed, we're going to see that it is their third preference. It hasn't been played recently and it's been buying against quite often. So just not a popular map. What I like about this map, Ban, is I feel like sometimes you get map bans where you'll try and teams try and play teams on their bad map. Yes. I don't feel like that's what's happened this time. I feel like they've just been allowed to come out and pick maps that they love, that they want to play. I feel like we've got maps that the teams themselves are going to be really confident on, rather than thinking, well, look, we'll play Border because they hate Border. We're all right on it. It's very much, Fear X will play Oregon because we love it. We've got Bleed, we'll play Clubhouse. It's one of our top maps. We had a great game against SSG on it earlier. Like, it's just one of those map bands that we've got everything that the teams want, I think. Bands come in for the operators. We've got Ying, Dokabi, Kaid. So no major surprises there. Just going to open up the hatches a little bit with that Kaid. Bang, going to make things a little bit quicker, a little bit easier for the attackers. Mira going. Um, always an interesting one, of course. Uh, very powerful on Oregon, particularly in the basement. There's some really, really strong mirrors. Also, if you may be playing dining as well, there's some really strong mirrors that you can use. So Mira's going to be taken away. And that is our operator bands rounding up. There's only one thing left to do. And that's to get on into round one and play this thing. Fear X versus Bleed. The winner takes all the marbles. The loser packs a bag and goes home. It literally is that simple. It's a long Let's way get home into it. for both of these two teams it as well. It is a long way home. Of course, South Korea and Japan, it's, uh, it's not exactly round the corner. So they are going to be looking toward making a stand here. And what better place to start? We're probably going to come to the whole momentum and sort of player longevity him quite often inside of this series given that obviously we have just had a, a short break fear x some of them will have had a slightly longer break than you and i given that we stayed on and did a little bit with the interviews and stuff afterwards so it was only dark that stuck around for that interview so as a team they have had a little bit of time to breathe but there isn't a great deal of time Five in terms left. of getting some food down you and starting to, you know, think, right, actually, Attackers you know, we need to be setting ourselves up and getting in, in the right frame of mind. We've won. Enjoy the fact we've won. Enjoy the fact we've knocked out G2. But let's get focused for this matchup against Bleed. Absolutely. Let's get into it then. Action phase round one. No messing about. This is where we make some serious decisions. Of course, both um, of the games that are on at the minute, A and the B stream, are both having those same outcomes. Uh, Cyclops play GK on the other side. And in about three hours time, we are going to know our four teams out of the eight that have made it through to phase two. And it could actually be a really good lineup for that side of the world, to be fair, Ollie. If Cyclops make it through against GK, I don't know the current score over there. We'll maybe try and get you an update as we go. Um, but if Cyclops uh, are able to beat GK, 
We've got a guaranteed team from here that's going to be from, if, if, you know, I know it's sort of broken down regionally, but if we call it that APAC region, yeah. so we're going to have like four teams. Oh, you know, absolutely. we've got Talon, we've got um, Scars that have already made it in. We could potentially have Fear X or Bleed. We're going to have Cyclops maybe. You know, there's going to be a, a lot of representation there. Oh, They've made it through some tough games to be there, but... Talking about tough games, there's going to be one to get through here before they make it. Asfi is going to be taken down to kick things off. That's the army gone. A big loss with those keeper barricades. But no, you can't miss your shots like that, mentalist. Good boy on the Vendetta is able to find the kill and close that out to give us now a five versus three. Not ideal to lose two players defending the basement here on Oregon. This is your bread and butter site as a defender, and you are expected to come away with okay, rounds down here. Now, it's not impossible, given that you're in a three versus five. Three it just makes it much more difficult. Look at what's available. We kind of glossed over the bands moving into this one, but we'll run through them quickly now. Ying Do could be removed from the attack. What does it leave open? It leaves a blitz. And Nova, he's going to be straight into blue here. Gets caught out in the F map, but that isn't going to slow him down. The impact, not going to do a lick of damage onto him. And with Deimos bearing down as well, things do start to get quite pressured here. Yeah, Reaps and Hoven just being forced deeper into Freezer, but managing to get a little bit of work done. Hoven finding Nova, that's the blitz gone. That could be a big pickup, but whilst they go for the collection there, Good Boy's able to get in and take down Turnster, leaving us now in a 3v1. It's Rin to go in and find the final kill. And that is cold inside of Freezer from Fear X as they pick up round one. Doing a good job there of isolating those players. They'd got the early map advantage. They were able to quickly then overwhelm and identify where those remaining roamers were. Whether that was using the blitz, pushing through blue and getting control of elbow. And in conjunction with the Deimos, you've got the death mark going through there. You can see where these players are and you can further start to isolate. Bleed did a good job of trying to hold on and they got themselves a few exits, but they were never really going to have much bite there after losing two players on the roam for not a lot of expense. Rin's just walked in and picked that one up there and for good boy to get that, considering he was in for a full sprint animation, to get out of it and into ABS, it just goes to show how devastating that vendetta is. It is, and in reality, I think, you know, we've, we've got to call it as we see it, and that is Mentalist should be picking that kill up. Uh, you know, like you say, sprinting towards him, he's not an ADS. Mentalist is, he just missed a couple of shots. It happens, but if it continues to happen, it could be a growing problem for Bleed. If Fear X managed to pick up round after round, as I said, coming in here, it's always that age-old discussion. Does it help to go back to back with only a short break? Fear X, they've just had, you know, one of the toughest, one of the best warm-ups they're going to get, realistically before a competitive game they've gone against G2 for three maps if they're not sharp right now they're never gonna be so you know it could be tough bleed have been sort of sat around for a little while waiting for this match to come along waiting to see who the opponents would be and um, you know maybe that will take its toll we see that mental it's a little bit cold maybe just missing that opportunity and VRX maybe just need to hit them kind of hard and fast and and get the win whilst the advantage is there for them I think if Mentalist is cold now, he must have been frozen this morning because he didn't do too much against SSG. On the series in total, he went 11 and 22. So, again, a little bit underperforming, you could say. Obviously, that SSG game was a bit of a war between them and Bleed, and it had similar notes to the G2 Fear X game that we saw as well, with the second map being the big defining factor of SSG going on then to win 14 rounds in a row. But... Bleed, that'll be in the rear view mirror as far as they're concerned. A difficulty, as you mentioned, not knowing who you're going up against here, not knowing really what to prep. It does force these more default maps. And this is where we're expecting to just see good teams. Again, they're a little bit concerned for me for Mentalist. He's stood inside of Bunker just around tarps there's a twitch drone sat watching him and he hasn't picked up on that he hasn't seen it he hasn't taken it out it's still there it's still active on the map and as is the information they know exactly where he's playing because of it it's not the end of the world there's nobody in a position to be able to push but again it's just that attention to detail it's those fine margins that are going to win and lose your games and Mephit is going to pick up Holborn with a Vulcan canister kill they're using their own gadgets against them that's not really meant to be how that works, I'm afraid. Nova is going to try and push down aggressively. He's already through the smoke, but an instant shotgun there with a direct trade. Demic 
playing over the Blitz's shoulder. It's the only way to do it. Blitz might be great up, but if he does get shot and taken out, you need someone there for that refrag. Rin, he's picked up his second on the round as well. And Turd now has a bit of info here. Does have the FNAF that he could choose to play around, but instead goes for that challenge. Yeah, and it's a good one to pick up. Brings it back to a two versus three. Makes it a little bit more winnable. But look at mental health. Really, really, really low at this point. It is going to be tough. It's sort of one and a half against three. But I guess Demic is a little bit low as well. There's Demos scans are still available. One has now been used, leaving one remaining just on the activation at the minute giving that information out as you can see they know exactly where he's playing now in there at pillars and there's the kill from mentalist onto mefe and i tell you what turds lucky to survive there at pillar but it wasn't for long as good boy peeks out finds the kill and that is it in this 2v1 situation with that information it's always going to be difficult he knows exactly where he is pre-fires with the vendetta beautiful stuff showing the real power of Demos. The irony there is you don't need to peek. Deimos knows where you are. Especially when you scan. It can be like Schrodinger's cat. You know there's a cat in the box, but you don't need I'm to open the cat. I'm both alive and dead here. You don't need to open the box to know there's a cat in it. You don't need to peek the corner to know the Deimos is on the other side, because he knows where you are and you know where he is. You've just got to try and keep yourself alive. Put the pressure back on. The clock's working down in your favor there. It's two rounds now that Bleed have lost down in the basement. It really doesn't bode well in terms of an Oregon and it's enough to force them into a side clear. They roamed in round number one. They didn't roam in round number two. The result was almost identical. You can see their mentalist just swinging out. Obviously, the Deimos ping is delayed slightly. So Deimos gets a very accurate ping onto you. You get a slightly delayed ping onto the Deimos. Maybe that's why he's made his swing. And mentalist with the low health, he knows that he's one shot to the vendetta. He, let's be honest, he doesn't have, you know, a myriad of choices there. No. He, he's got to make a play, I guess. You make the play, the play makes you. It didn't happen in that case. Um, you know, good boy, a great round from him. I think we've got to focus on that as well. Four and zero so far. And I think we're really starting to see why BRX are feared on Oregon. You know, why teams don't want to play them here. It is their map. They are really, really strong. They're showing that with back-to-back -back basement wins. Bleed, they need to get something going soon because this one's going to run away from them quickly. Mephi got a good bit of intel there inside of Tier 2. He knows that Asfi is going to be playing down there and maybe try and disrupt him somewhat. Hovind, and yeah, taken out there by... Like, there's loads of places you can build your fortress. Using that. Here on this toxic babe can pushing into attic can make things a little bit difficult. Will get ripped, the plant does get stopped. De
switch off. Um... First my fault. They've had a funny season in Japan. I've covered, um, of course, the majority of the Japan League this this re uh, this stage. I was I was lucky enough to be able to do so. It's a region that I really enjoy watching and covering. Um, and Cyclops were a real roller coaster team. You'd have them performances out of them. They've got a new player in Shurip, and um, they've changed things around a little bit. And uh, it's been sort of tough for them, I think, to to find like their new identity. And Black Ray's been, you know, fitting into his role, and it is now his role rather than being shared and um, it, it's been an interesting one for them but they struggled a little bit overall in the in the stage and then towards the end in the sort of LCQs and the playoffs we started seeing them at a little bit more like we'd expect for Cyclops um, and it's it's good to see that they've come here to the major and that has continued and their form seems to be picking up and up and up mm. um, and they could well be on for one of those qualification spots if they continue they're going to have to win that match against GK of course who are more than capable of coming back but uh, yeah the winner will go through as will the winner of this one it could also be a three mapper could be it a three mapper where Cyclops just start doing Cyclops things all of a sudden who knows yeah, could. Um, obviously that game is only just started as well both the games this morning finished at a reasonable time nothing going too long so we are well on schedule here today if you have only just joined us we are on the bleed versus fear x fixture right now we are on oregon I'm just getting a small tech pause out of the way um I'm not entirely sure what caused it but it seems as though players are starting to filter into the lobby so once the final couple of checks have been done and all of the round history has been inputted, we will be getting ourselves back into the server very soon. And as the fist bumps commence, it looks like we have got the green light to go. Fearex currently lead by a clean three rounds on the attacking side. Bleed, previous to this timeout, or technical timeout, did take a tactical pause to discuss and to try and bring a little bit of stability into what has already been quite a turbulent start here, given that you are expected to win defensive rounds here on this map. VRX as well, I think it's worth saying at this point. Obviously, you know, the win against G2 was fantastic for them, but also, um, you know, showing, again, a good upward trend. Coming through the Korean League, they finished fourth overall in the group stage, heading into the playoffs, and then ultimately lost out on the direct spot to phase two to PSG Tower, um, you know, playing them in the final, but then made their way through the LCQs. Uh, again, did very well, uh, very consistent, being able to beat um, D-plus back-to-back. -back. They had to beat them, and then they went down to 
into the lower bracket and then came back through and had to play him in the grand final. Um, so beating him best of one, beating him best of three, and have been pretty convincing, really. And then we get them here into Manchester, and they're showing that they can compete with the big boys. It's as simple as that. So a real shout for BRX to be progressing at the minute. I think, to be honest, I would always expect Oregon to go towards them. They are, If they're not losing Oregon, then there's a problem for them because it is their top map and they really should be winning here. Um, so for me, I think map two is going to be particularly important. We always say all teams, if you want a good run at a major, you better be able to play clubhouse. Um, you know, we know why Bleed have picked it. It's a good map for them. It's lower in the preference, much lower for BRX. If they can come in and put a good performance in there and continue this momentum, that could be a real defining uh, moment for them. Of course, Bleed have already played that map a couple of times already. They played it against SSG and they were successful. And they played it in day one against... Uh, oh, no, they didn't play against against CAG. I thought they played it against CAG as well. Maybe I'm getting confused with the other game. But they've at least played it against Space Station and they were able to take... That was the only map that they took in that series earlier today. So showing a little bit of comfort, at least, on the map. And again, it comes down to the age old. You know, it might be a very default map. It might be a map we expect everyone to know. But win your map and win the decider and you've got the best of three. That can often be as good a strategy as any. A little bit of an extension that is slowly but surely making its way back down. So, whereas they went for a pretty significant roam in round one and died on the roam and then lost the round. They went for a turtle in round two and still lost the round, didn't really die on the roam because they didn't roam. This time they've gone for the sort of halfway house of we're going to go up and waste a little bit of time and we're going to try and burn this clock down. Good boy, he's going to be sending the Twitch drone down, just looking for any utility. Quite often you'll have props alarms, you might have a Wamai Magnet, you'll have all sorts hidden underneath there, and Ethnap particularly with Mentalist this time on the Fenrir, rather than the Wamai. So just making sure that there was nothing there to clear out, of course, the potential for the Vulcan canisters as well. Nova trying to find the angle there, but the design of the canister is such that you shouldn't really be able to shoot it from. Touchstone will come in to do the job for him, and you get a little two for one there. Obviously, you're looking as a defender to blow a deal of time in between, but when they both get ball blown at the same time, the disruption effect doesn't as long as you don't get the first one going, wait, second one going, it's just out, and that is going to really need because there are only With no not on heavy drop here. Third managing to pick up a double, and this is looking good for bleed. 25 seconds. Have to find. Do go in and manage to pick up third in a late trade. Mephi managing to get that one over. But 15 seconds left to go. There's not much time. Aggressive. Some bleed. Allowed to get that kill over onto Good Boy, but mentally picking two there. The Monty has the not after the shield, but if you lose the guy on your shoulder, you've not really got too much choice, and you're better off trying to capitalize. Bleed finally get them finally get themselves around, and they can look towards starting to chain a few together now. Now, interestingly, Tim. They've not actually gone for the top floor. They've Ten not gone for kids. Remaining. They've gone for a third choice side. They've actually gone for key kitchen and meeting. Five I was going to say remaining. Keating then, but that's actually a, a singer that no one. Attack. Let's get into it. <laughs> Setting barricade. Um, important places for the defenders to hold on.
They're going to want to keep hold of that verticality down onto rear stage. Uh, the Osser has not been brought along by the attack. There is, of course, the age-old straightforward, nice and simple attack of opening up the attic wall, opening up the rear stage wall, play the Osser shields on both, um, and you can basically hold and get a plant down. They're not going to go for that this time. They do have the glass, so I think a little bit of smart play again in behind that Monte. Try and push forward, get control of green uh, and work from there. Maybe try and get uh, the wall open between main lobby and just around where split is, main lobby in through towards me and maybe try and open that little area up. Um, although saying that, no hard breach brought along. Oh, sorry, they've got the thermite. Um, unlikely, I think, to try and push in with the thermite, though. It'd usually be an ace that you would use. You want your thermite at rear stage is more what I was thinking. Nova does need to keep himself cautious here. There's some serious aggression being shown by Hoven. Not afraid to get right up into that Monty's face and to ping it out. We do still have Reaps up above as well. Maybe looking in for a bit of a hop in here through your green window. The smoke's certainly gone out, and Mephi's going to put himself into that smoke and see if he can make use of Glass's scope. But with no one clearing Attic, you can't just walk yourself into meeting like that. Like I said at the beginning of the round, Attic is, is one of your first ports of call. If you're going to breach this wall and you want to plant on the stage, you better get control of Attic because otherwise Reaps is going to sit up there and have an absolute field day. And it feels like PRX have just got ahead of themselves here. You know, you can't push in like that. I think maybe Mephi just sees the opportunity. He knows that the smoke's only just left. So if I just push in, I might get him. But you're just asking for trouble. And to be honest, he got exactly what he asked for. And that was to be killed from the attic hatch. VRX have to deal with that. Otherwise, Reaps is going to win this round. It's not even been reeled. Attic isn't even reinforced from tier two to attic. Rin will find himself one on an aggressive swing. Takes down turd. They still haven't got control of Attic, and that is a problem. And Although, they're, they're, they're holding Attic, the long angle. They're, they're, they're holding it. Up. And I joke about it not being reinforced. Even, th even then, you can still hold it, and it is maybe more advantageous to actually hold it that way um, as an attacker. So maybe they've been done a little bit of a favor there. Nova can get himself into the site all he likes, but this is the backstab here from Good Boy. Caught out on the camera. Turd will be watching that. You can see him frantically flicking everything at the moment. But these players from Bleed, they're just digging in for this final 20. Yeah, Bleed have still got somebody lurking up above. I'm not sure if it's Reaps that's gone back, but if it is, he manages to pick up Good Boy. Three versus two. I think Good Boy was looking to, to get above to try and clear that out, but there's no way that Fear X win this now. Nova is one versus three. Pistol only manages to find his man, but with the one up above, five seconds to go, he's going to have to get the kills. Doesn't have Diffuser in hand. He knows that it's done, and that's going to be another round taken for Bleed and Fear X. They looked a little bit more like the Fear X we saw on Consulate there. Just missing steps, not taking important ground, not dealing with situations that they needed to, just getting ahead of themselves. It goes back to the basics, doesn't it? You know, I'm pretty sure that it was Good Boy that had the kit there because that's where it ended up after he died. And he's the one that's tried to backstab through dining into kitchen. Why he's got the kit, I will never know because the kit should be either on the Monty or near the Monty, so you can use the Monty to get that plant down in some way. Maybe we get a little bit more visibility on it here. It's Demic, it seems, that had the kit for a brief time. At least that's what I got to glimpse. So maybe it was him that left it over there in toward green or something. But at, at the very least, um, I think Fear X, they've tried to skip straight to get the plant down step. Very similar to Consulate, very similar to their attacks of Garage on that map where they just weren't interested in Alamo above. G2 punished them for it. Ultimately, it didn't matter in the context of the series, but it's a mistake that is going to start to show again. It doesn't matter which point of entry you want to push from. Short of the wall next to split, I will discount that a little bit. But otherwise, if you want to push from dining into kitchen, if you want to push from green corridor into kitchen, if you want to push into rear stage, all of that can be watched from above. You want to push in from security to kitchen, it can be watched from above. You have to get the top floor if you're attacking onto that site, and Fearex have just paid the price for not doing. And right now, with Bleed getting two rounds in a row, you can see they're starting to build their confidence up a little bit here. They're at the windows, they're looking for those peaks, and, you know, we know that Turd's a player that, given an opportunity, he will just get really aggressive at you and go for those big moments. I'm surprised we've not seen the Bosch G8 cog yet. It's one of his favourites. Maybe he's been told by Julio that that's it. It's elimination, man. No, you can't be messing around on this Bosch G8 cog any longer. We need you on a gun. So we need powerful, you on someone though. with a bit like... more utility. Hit a, hit a three speed with it, and it's got some serious stopping power. I still can't wait to see the spawn peak he did on labs yesterday. 
Yeah. Where he hops out, hops over the banister, and you just get a glimpse if someone's coming over the helipad. Gonna be looking to try and get into Armory Hoven, just holding out the Monte for the time being. That'll be easily cleared, but just burns another five seconds.
Welcome back. See, I promised it wouldn't be too long. We've got that turned around pretty quickly, I think. Obviously, a uh, technical issue has been resolved. We're going to get back live with the game just as soon as we can do. Round seven was finished up. I believe it went to bleed, so yep. we currently sat at 4-3. We're just getting all the players finalised and ready to go, and we'll be getting back in, but pretty much everything is set up, so we should be back there. Sort of 30 seconds a minute, I think. We'll be uh, back into the action. Absolutely unfortunate, but these things do happen, especially when you've got a live event in what Amy was calling yesterday was an air hangar. I was calling it more of like a, it's like a, a shed purpose built for events and things like that, of that nature. Um, the argument for the air hangar was that there was no like door that an airplane could get through. So how can it be an air hangar well, if yeah, you can't get a plane in it? It might be big enough for a plane, but there's no door. So you'd have to build the plane inside and then, then you, you won't could, be able to get yeah, it yeah. out. A uh, bit of a problem that if you're going to try and build a plane, but we're not building the plane. We are going to talk about some siege here and we do have all of the players in the lobby. We are just performing some final checks to make sure that once we start this train, it ain't going to stop again until we have finished Oregon. We can see the fist bumps go out there and we are back into action. As Tim has already said, Fearx, they lead four rounds to three right now. Um, the couple of rounds that we missed to bring you up to speed, Bleed obviously have been successful in round number seven. Fearx did get a 4-2 split um, at the start of things, and Bleed now on the attack and looking to try and level up that round count. Bleed picking up round seven is actually really big because it's their first attacking round. And coming in, I said, you know, a 4 2 half on the attack for VRX is great. They're going to be confident of getting the defense locked down. You know, it's their map. I can't see them sort of losing basement, losing top floor. But Bleed have been able to come in and take one of those sites away from them. I would assume that it was basement and that they're going to be trying there again. It may well have been top floor. We'll try and get that uh, confirmed for you as we progress through. But what we do know, round eight coming in, it's going to be basement. VRX trying to to hold on to that. We've got the Fenrir on side. Some a quite a lot of play, located. given that he's not banned out this time. Uh, and a great operator for down on this basement. The Amaru tries to go in. Takes a lot of damage, but oh, Rin, no. no. He thought he was down. Rin thought that they were down and are going to be punished by Asfi. Oh, dearie me, that is Big not mistake. a mistake you want to make. It can sometimes be difficult Gordon. to know if you've got a down or not. But Rin was Rin, so Rin, confident. Rin. Just floor bang it. It's all soft. You don't need, when you get up the ladder, I'm like, what's he? No one gets Pro up blaster. that ladder at that point in the round. Deadly stuff. Asfi can breathe a sigh of relief there. The opening pick is going to go in favor of Bleed. And when you're attacking onto the basement, there is no better op to remove than that Warden. It's going to make all of those stuns that little bit more deadly. We've also got some smokes on the Jackal as well. And with the Rome clear focus that Bleed have got right now with that lineup, they are going to be given a little bit of assurance that they've done a decent job of this Rome clear. That's it, a couple of smokes, three flashes, plenty, um, you know, that can be used that the Warden would have been a large help to deal with. So we'll see later in the round how impactful that is, whether it's something that Bleed can take advantage of or not. For the time being, they're not getting carried away here. They're doing the due diligence, they're going in with the drones, they're getting their intel, they're taking map control before they try and push on towards site. They're gonna now be getting the hatches open. We're at the halfway mark, and this is pretty well timed for them so far. However, Mephi is going to find one onto Reaps. That was down at the bottom of Freezer Stairs. It's the Jackal that's gone, and it's some of those smoke canisters taken off the board. So that loss of Warden might not be quite as big now. Two flashes Break left out. on the side of Mentalist, but that is all they've got that the Warden would have been useful against. Turd going to be spotting out a bit of utility here as he is discovering the location of the FNATs. Seems a little bit redundant when you've got the IQ kicking about as well, but you can never be too careful. They haven't really got anything to directly deal with those apart from nades and obviously shooting them. There's no twitch or anything of that nature to get it done from afar. So it's going to be a consideration moving into this final 30 seconds. We've got Nova looking to push up a little bit more aggressively with the shotgun. Asfi, he's going to find one. He's still not done out of this round. Don't forget, he's been on one HP for the majority of it. Eventually shut down by Mephi. A C4 ripped and sent, but a close peek is going to be punished there. Mentalist, he's going to fall. Mephi's on for three here, leveled up at two men apiece with only 14 left to go. A great nade. It is going to force a little bit of a reposition, but with Hoffman falling to Nova, there's a lot for Turk to do in only six seconds. 
Tries to pre-fire around the corner, but the shotgun reigns supreme on those close angles, and Mephi is able to close out the round. Firex take themselves up to five on the scoreboard. 5-3 it is going to be, and this is dangerous territory for Bleed now. They managed to get that first attack, but we're heading up to another popular site. It's going to be Dorms now for Fear X. If they're able to hold on to this defensively, it puts them on that map point. And yes, Bleed may be able to get the third choice site, but then Fear X have got their choice of where they can finish things off. So Bleed for me, this next one, he said all over round nine, it's going to be an essential win for Bleed. It's all about the round Drop nines. Drop the bomb diffuser. Mephi again, a couple of really big multi-kills. Uh. Doing a fantastic job keeping his team in it. He's not the first time he's had a multi-kill in this game. He also got one in round four on the very same side, just they were on the attack instead. Another 3K that was round defining. For all that he's had a good deal go. of success, he's you know, still not fragging out on the leaderboard. Seven and two at Five the moment. By far and away, the most contributing player kill-wise on Fear X at the moment. On the flip side, you still get the feeling that Bleed are just on the back foot a little bit cold here, Tim. They've never really got their got their going here on Oregon just yet. You can see Rin here getting aggressive right up at that master door. Once his peak takes a little look, can't find Hoven, who is just going to reposition on the rappel, not going to give anything away too easily. Um, could do with taking out that main door, really, just helps cut down the rotations around that bottom floor um, so they're not having any of the defenders pushing sort of underneath them or coming back up armory stairs later in the round, for example. Just makes it a bit more tricky to do that, but it's going to be tricky for Mephi to do anything. And that's a big loss with the Solis going down. A great opener for Asfit, but good boy is there to level things up, managing to find Reaps. Good boy again on to Mentalist. Turbine's Demic, three versus three as we have an absolute flurry of kills in the mid round. Not a lot of time gone off the block and already plenty of action. Aspie's got himself into Kid's gonna find one on to Nova. He's already put shots in as well. Nova eventually gonna finish off yet another. And with Rin, the only player surviving here, this is surely a bleed round, but the player splitting themselves up into one versus ones. If he knows about the player just on the other side of the bunk, which he doesn't, Asfi finishing off that final kill. Bleed showing they've still got a bit of pace here in them on Oregon. Asfi's had a real couple of rounds on the Amaru there. He's, you know, got that initial kill onto Rin a couple of rounds ago where he's gone into top floor and Rin's thought that he was down, but he wasn't. And then there gets himself right on into sight and has such a huge impact yeah. when in there. So great stuff from Asfi using that Amaru. And as I said, important round for Bleed to pick up there. It means that they're only one round down. It doesn't put Fear X on map point. And now, Fear X have got to go and do the same again. And in honesty, they weren't even really kind of close to holding on to that circle. Bleed, I'm sure they're going to be confident they can pick up another one here and level things up, but they're always going to be kind of fighting against the tide here of Bleed because Fear X are just waiting for basement to open back yeah. up again. They're then still going to have domes to come back and try again. They're basically always going to be, um, you know, it's something that Dev Marta said to me a few weeks ago when we were casting Japan together. What's the reward for winning an attack on a primary site? You get to go and do it again, and that's what Bleed are going to face now. And especially with that one round advantage that Fear X have got, they've got that buffer, they've got a little bit of wiggle room. What you've got to really do is win two primaries in a row, and then you can start to think about mounting a little bit of a comeback, obviously depending on what the round count is looking like. But for Bleed, I would say that a win here is crucial. Fear X, they would be put on a map point if they were successful up here, and as we've already mentioned, they can go back down to Laundry. So that you've really got to be cautious of. There was a red ping there. I think the default might have been left open for just a little bit longer, and it's given Rin an opportunity at a peak, but he's not looking to play that too heavily at all. A little bit of an in and out and gets himself safely into the body of the building. Good boy, you're just going to be feeding that information in from underneath, and this is becoming a, a real intel battle here as the army of Mephit is going to be picked up by the scan of Demos. It's just going to be a little bit of a battle as to who can use that intel better. Asfi manages to find one with the nade, which is unusual, but explosion for explosion. Good boy underneath on the pulse, manages to pick up the trade. And that's going to be the Deimos off the board, the Grimgon as well. A real big loss of utility for Bleed. This is VRX's moment to get this site locked down, and then they can go straight through to basement from that point and just get it locked out. 
Bleeder quite split up at the moment as well. Reaps, he's going to win his one and turn another. This has already become very doable as Reaps grabs two on white stairs. Nova left in the clutches here. Fear X have gone from a very comfortable advantage here to being right up against it. And Nova's just going to give himself away. He knew that there was a player there on white. Reaps just found three without moving his feet, Ace. Yeah, a tough one from Nova there. I mean, it, it, there's nothing wrong with having a look on white stairs, make sure they're not coming up. It's got to be a quick peek. You've got to be, I'll have a little look and I'm back in. You know, it's got to be, you can't just strafe slowly out to the top. If you're going to do that, you've got to pre-fire. you got to, you know, the last thing you can do is just walk out to the top of the Wonder. stairs. Wonder. You get caught out. He's in the current. That's he's, a... he's firmly caught in the current. Breezing along with it. Um, Nova taken out at the end there. Firex managing to, um, sorry, d you know, ultimately being overcome by Bleed, who managed to lock out that round, get it back to 5 5. As I said, the difficulty for Bleed is they're always fighting against that current a little bit because they're always going to be going into primary sites now or what, you know, what we consider strong defensive sites. But Firex do call in the tack timeout. They're not happy about being chased down. They know that round should have been theirs, realistically. Got themselves a good advantage and uh, Bleed just able to, to really turn it around there towards the end. Um, it was brilliant stuff from them. And Firex, no surprise, are going to be heading back down to basement. I would say that timeout is as important for Bleed as yeah, it is I'd for Firex who took it. Because Julio in that timeout can give them a lot of valuable information. Obviously, what they've been doing in the last couple of rounds has been working. They've also been given quite a few opportunities, but something that we do see Bleed do occasionally is get a bit overconfident. They've just won a couple of rounds in a row there. A brilliant moment to just drag them out of it and say, look, you're doing great. Don't screw this up. Don't get too overconfident now and start to think that you can just go in and one-man army everything. Continue playing in the way that you have been because they've really dragged themselves back into this one. They've now got the prospects of attacking down into basement, which is fine. But in the back of Fear X's mind is, we need two rounds to get this one over the line, and we've not been successful upstairs yet. That's it, Fear X. It's got to be a, a bit of a mental game coming in because, of course, you know, moving on to Clubhouse, they know that it's a map they're not fantastic on. Uh, Bleed are going to be very, very good there. Already had a good win against SSG today. Um, and I'm just wondering if maybe a little bit, and, you know, I don't know. Um, I'm surmising at this point, but we've got to remember Fear X have come through a very long game against G2. Bleed have had a, a, a game against SSG this morning that's going to have been tense. It's, you know, they've been sort of beaten up a little bit on there, but they've had a break. They've come away from it. And at the beginning, of the game, you could kind of see that. I believe we're a little bit slow into this one, but now that they've got themselves like revved up again and they're warm and they're ready to go, I'm just wondering if the, the inverse is true of Fear X. The fatigue may be just starting to tell a little bit. They've been playing for about four hours now, um, including that G2 matchup, and you know, ultimately it is going to have an impact at some point. And you've already mentioned about them taking their foot off the gas yesterday. We're kind of yet to see that today. It hasn't no, been, they've been much better to the that, same yeah. extent, but it's in the back of your mind of like, it's, an, it's, it's a possibility. It's something that may happen at some point, and especially the longer that this series goes on. They've already played a full three mapper against G2. Granted, there was a 7-0 in there, so it was a quick three maps in the grand scheme of things. But this is shaping up to potentially go into an overtime. All of a sudden, they're going through the absolute ringer in, three, in two best of threes to get themselves qualified into phase two. They haven't chosen to roll too heavily here in round number 11. Instead, just choosing to take advantage of the safe spots naturally presented inside of basement. And as such, it's given Bleed pretty much free reign to get all these hatches open and to establish themselves. Mentalist is crouch walking everywhere at the minute. And I think it's basically, he's trying to keep himself off the radar. He doesn't want them hearing him walking above so that they can call, oh, they've got a shield up there. Um, because they want this to be a little bit of a surprise factor. I don't know exactly where they're gonna use Mentalist. It's gonna be the hatch drop. In he goes, he's looking to get himself into sight. The keeper barricade prevents where he wants to go. And it's completely failed. It's had absolutely no impact. Really well played from Fear X using that utility just to prevent whether it was knowingly or not. It still got the job done. Rin's going to take a ton of damage on the back stairs. Dips away from the fight, but Demick picks up third elsewhere. Five versus two, and BRX looking good in the basement to get themselves onto map point. Reeves has still got a big part to play here. There is a possibility, 30 seconds on the clock, and a player softened up on the side of Fear X. Hoven finds Mephi, stun goes out, Reeves pushes off the back of it, Freezer already cleared. 
can now start to pick his new opponent. Good boy. He's going to shut Hovland down and put Reeps in even more of a difficult position. He doesn't even know where the push could be coming from here. He's just got to take his chances and pre-fire. As far as Fear X is concerned, they don't want to push this, but they've already given two away. Six seconds left on the clock. Doesn't find Demic. Honestly, Tim, there's a world there where he picks up that headshot onto Demic and then it gets a real tense four seconds. But Fear X, they knew what they had. They had a four versus one, and they had the time tumbling down in their favor. Matt point here for Fear X. Yeah, I think uh, I think Fear X will be uh, hopefully taking a lesson or two from that. You know, if you don't need to peek around that corner, maybe don't. But it's hilarious. It They're all oh, laughing their heads off. It's absolutely, it's absolutely hilarious when you pick up the kill and you don't lose. Imagine in the rank stage. But if you'd have lost, you would have lost, you're going to get it roasted by now. Brent. Um, just seeing that uh, that hold again on the rear stage. There's Demet closing out the round. And, uh, th this is the thing I love about Fear X. You know, regardless of the situation, it's 6-5. They, you know, they're not absolutely walking away with this one. It's a tough no. game. It's an intense game. But they're still clearly enjoying their siege. And that's what is just... It makes it so easy to get behind this team and to enjoy them, to, to watch them play, to tune in, because they're just... They're, they're fun to watch. I think both of these teams, uh, yeah, I think because you've got, as well. you've got Fear X, who, on the face of it, are one of the more rating. energetic, smiley, you know, happy-go-lucky teams. And then on the Five flip side, you've go. got Bleed, who are a bit memers. You know, they've got Joel, they've got the fish blanket, they've got the, the chip blanket now, they've got everything going for them. And both of them have got a lot of things that I think they pick up a lot of neutral fans. Yeah, I'd agree with you. I think, you know, along the way, they certainly have done. Um, and there's definitely plenty of, uh, plenty of backing for the both. We will see uh, whose fans are going to be happier at the outcome of this one. Firex now have a map point opportunity. Instead of going up to the top floor where they haven't had any success so far, they are instead going to take themselves to meeting. So they're going to be trying to hold on to that top floor. Let's see if Bleed learned the lesson from their success last time around, where they were able to dominate from this top floor and themselves go in and make sure that they take away that space from Firex. Nova we're going to be hiding out there at the bottom of White. He's got a nice skinny angle, assisted by his Kiba barricade. Tons of them to find those nice little, almost one-way angles where there's no chance anyone's got anything but Asfi. He loves this T3, doesn't he? he? Often finds himself there, regardless of the op he's on. He's on. There's a fear this time. He's been up there on the Amaru, but he's caught out Demic on the rotate and he's taken down the smoke ace. That's a lot of time that's been burnt out now. It is uh, a lot of deniability that's gone along Attackers with them. The it really feels like this could be heading towards those additional rounds. By contrast, Fear X have not really tried to hold on to Attic. They've reinforced the hatch instead. They've given the ground up. Bleed are going to open that up, and that should give them what they need, really, to be able to get in, get control over that rear stage, and think about putting the plant down. But Good Boy is in a position that he's going to try to hold them off for the time being. The question is, does Asfi know about Rin? Rin has a little fight, has a little think about going back for more, but decides, no, it's time to get myself back to sight. The player a little bit late there onto the shower window as well. You could hear it just getting punched open, trying to catch rid on that rotation, but not successful in doing so. About a minute left, and we've still got Bleed struggling to get access into the building. They could probably take it if they wanted to, but they just don't feel confident or safe to do so just yet. Asfi, he's here, there, and everywhere. He started off with tier three. He's now getting himself up into kids upstairs. And he's going to start to rip open some of this floor along with Mentalist. But you've got to have someone below ready for the catch. It's all well and good disrupting those side players. But you need someone else there as well. What a punch hole! But it's been immediately done. He's in with a turn and burn ace. I've got a question. Did Good Boy need the punch hole? It's a soft wall. Just spray through it and you're likely to get the kill. Uh, you know what? Gives his location away and pays the price. But Reeps, he's going to get hit with a headshot from Mephi. Fear X have got an opportunity. Three versus three, but Asfi finds no, but Mephi will help. This is going to be tough to hold on, but they've only got 10 seconds to grasp as tight as they can. But the grasp is loosening. Turd manages to find Mephi. It's all up to Rin. 1v3. Cut down by turd, and that is it. We are going to overtime, X. Hey, there we go. We finally get to hear it. The classic line there from Ace. We are going to be headed into an overtime here on Oregon. It is only fitting 
between these two teams. Both of them have played lights out Siege. Bleed really hitting that mental reset after the first three rounds because they were not looking good in this fixture at all. But that last round just goes to show how much grit and determination this side has. They really used every single second of the clock there to get the job done right up until the dying moments. I guess the important thing about the overtime is who gets which side. We will obviously find out after these replays, but we can just see how devastating they were on that push through. I think Yin had a really tough ask of him there. He's got flag to push through. He can go one way or the other. It's very easy. You've just got to watch two directions and there was three players alive left to bleed. I think Peter Axe are going to be kicking themselves. It was winnable. Um, you know, even after even after losing Demic on the smoke so early in the round, there was a couple of mistakes along the way. As I say, good boy going for the punch hole. He's got the solace, he's got the gadget, he knows there's somebody on the other side. If you even if you're not confident of it, just spray through it. Just spray yeah, through it and you know, hope that you come away with it. You're, you're really hating the fact that that was my yeah, punch hole made, aren't you? It's like, I can see it's eating you up inside. Just like, just spray through the wall, mate. Just, 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 just dump the mag. It's, uh, it's easy done, but in the heat of the moment, mistakes are made. I think for X, maybe a sigh of relief that they can breathe is that they're still on the defense. So they can go back downstairs. They can take us to the basement and they can look to try and pick up this first round of overtime right here and now. Reeps is going to get an early Building advantage, though, picking up Rin. We would expect maybe, uh, you know, the, the attackers to come away with the advantage. That's been the side that has come away with the 4-2 halves, and it's certainly continuing here as they've lost Jaeger. Not the end of the world losing the Jaeger. The ADSs will already be down. You're just a good gun at that point, and you're out there looking for kills, but losing that operator, losing that manpower in the first 30 seconds is really not ideal. Here goes Mephi, though, manages to pick up one, and they're not quick enough here, Lead. There was an opportunity there to maybe get in and just cut off that return, get that trade, but they didn't react quickly enough. They didn't have the barricades open that they needed. And Mephi, he's able to get Asfi and look at the utility you've just lost. The Capitao, huge, huge utility when it comes into that final execute. Mephi doing a great job. I was going to say, he looks like he's maybe framing himself up for another there. He's only now going to get himself back down the stairs and into the site. So he's burnt half the round. He's picked up a kill. He's traded out for Rin as well. All things pretty level moving into this final half. Third, he's going to be spotting out on the Deimos. He can identify that warden, but if he's long gone, he's, he's already into the heart of side. There's no way you're catching him on any sort of rotation now. There's maybe a bit of hesitation there from Bleed as well, because they had some info on the drones. So with a bit of hindsight, maybe they would choose to play that one just a little bit differently. But all is not lost. They've still got a lot of utility to get the job done here. Of course, you mentioned we've lost the Capitao. We do still have the Flores, and we do still have those Rotero drones to go in, get rid of some of those Kiba barricades, maybe destroy an FNAT or two, and see what value they can find. Hobbit is just going to be clearing out that Kiba barricade. 45 seconds left to go, and it's time for Bleed to start making a move. They need to be finding some kills. They need to be gaining some space, and that's exactly what Turd is going to do. He's going to try to move in along with Mentalist, who uses the skeleton key to get the kill as he comes around the corner, shut down by a good boy in an immediate trade, though. Three versus three, 30 seconds left to go, and in a big point to their credit, Fearex still had pillar, but good boy has been forced away. He's had to retreat down highway. He's still going to try to hold on to rear stage stairs but all the way back into freezer it goes and this is good from fear x they're just conceding ground only when they have to but they're taking bodies as they do two versus three nine seconds left to go hogan tries to get one finds the other he knows where there's one at elbow two versus one one second hogan has to hold this plant and fear x come around the corner looking for the kill but no turn is there and that's going to be the first overtime round going to bleed in what could be a big, big blow to Fear X. What a masterclass from bleed that was right there. I don't think you could play that any better if you tried. A brilliant balance of pushing when you had to. We saw Fear X, they were trying. You mentioned, Tim, and one of the comments you made was that they were, they were retreating back and giving up ground, which was fantastic, but 
they didn't really have anywhere else to go and it looked like they were doing so out of a little bit of fear more than anything else because they didn't have a numbers advantage to trade they needed to be getting clean one kills and not then trading that one out so it was a little bit unfortunate i think from fear x the position that they found themselves in but bleed played it fantastically hoven particularly being able to pick up that kill and then push in and tuck and get the plant down in the only spot that really couldn't have been dealt with that was the kill onto his army he navigated that one perfectly because there was a player on both sides there was a player in freezer and there was a player inside and he just baited it out to perfection gets himself into position for the plant and then the plant goes down and forces the clock and turd well he does the rest bleed take a lead for the first time here on this map Hard to think that they were 3-0 down objective. at the, at the start of this game, especially with the way that it's ended up going. But this is their chance to take Fear X's map away from them. It's essential that Fear X wake up here and now because you just feel if the bleeder are able to take this and get themselves onto Clubhouse, I really fancy them for Clubhouse. And I think it's going to be uh, an uphill battle at that point for Fear X to get back into this one. And a reminder of the stakes for everybody. The loser goes home at this point, Fear X. You know, what a blow for them to knock G2 out to Imagine. win that first el elimination match. Get past G2. And I'm not discrediting Bleed here, but to to overcome that first hurdle and then not make it through to phase two because Bleed beat you in the second matchup, you know, that's going to be tough to take. Yeah, you don't want that to be your defining moment, do you? And for G2 as well, they want Fear X to go as, as deep yeah, as possible. That's it. They want Fear X to win the big <laughs> They want Fear X to win the whole thing. Oh, we got knocked out by the winners. It's all right. It's uh, it's just one of those things that happens in uh, in early stage games sometimes. But yeah, exactly. Uh, and that's when you know the pressure really does start to mount and build. Reeks. As much as he loves T3 on the attack, he loves it on the defense as well. That's where he found himself, but he's been caught out quite nicely there. A nice little two-piece from Rin to uh, enable that peak. No punch all this time. I know it was good by last time, but no punch all. Just spray through the wall, get the kill. Um, job done. Rin's going to open up the back there. Um, good boy going in with the Twitch drone. Just pinging out the gadgets for the time being. I think probably no charges available on the drone for the time being. Just going to leave it there until it recharges. Takes one out. Uh, it's going to be the F nat that's just underneath. Not activated at the minute. I think that's actually why he's not taking it out there. Um, maybe waiting to see if it does get activated or not. Demic is going to find another one of those F nats up at the top there. Um, and the Twitch drone. Twitch drones just continue raining havoc inside a side. He's going to have no f -map charges left to activate it with at some point, because he's already taken out two active ones, but good point getting a lot of value out of a measly little shock drone, and it goes to show why Twitch is one of the more preferred operators on the attack at the moment. You've got the DMR, you've got the smokes, and of course you have got that shock drone. Mephi is going to try and make his stand here in blue, and he just sends out some bees just to push any of those bleed defenders back and give himself a little bit of room to work with. But time's running a little bit strange in this one. It's really sort of caught up with those. Bit of a drop comes through. Rin's on for a double as Hoffman unfortunately suffers a team kill as he takes his teammate Mentalist out there. Two versus five. They've lost the blitz, but really, Fear X have got everything that they need to do here. They don't need that shield to push in and create space anymore because they've got it. They've got the man advantage. Demic is going to be able to put this diffuser down. Very difficult for Bleed to be able to do anything. Every angle should be covered, and it is. Hoven taken down as he tries to swing the bomb chassis. Turd is locked inside a freezer. He's just trying to get anything going. He hits plenty of shots into Demic, but ultimately, Demic only needs to find one in return, and that is the headshot onto Turd to close out the round and we're going all the way to 15. Now, where do Fear X go? Do they go back downstairs? Bleed looked pretty good attacking onto the basement. In round 13, they were able to get a win down there quite convincingly. They did win it twice, though, round 8 and 11. Both were basement Fear X for have, Fear X. Yes, they have won it twice previous. And the only logical choice is to roll the dice down there again, and that's exactly what they'll do. I'll be honest, though, Ace, Bleed, they were convincing in round 13. It was beautiful. They were. Um, yeah, it's absolutely, you know, fantastic. Uh, everything that they did just worked perfectly well for them. Fear X things up. They're going to have to do a little bit better here, just looking at the lineup that they've got coming into the basement. We've got the Goyo, so we've got those Vulcan canisters to try and burn a little bit of time. This whole Vulcan canisters, Kiba barricades, everything to just try and slow down bleed and not allow them to get too aggressive. Um, you know, we've seen the barricades. 
Ball on into Pillar, but oh, there's a keeper barricade in front of me. There's nothing I can do. With the lineup, really. Just three minutes to decide who is going to take Oregon and who's going to take that one between what has been so far two very evenly matched teams and a very entertaining game of Siege. It's been a good thing. This is only map one. It's a belter, isn't it? We've still got another map guaranteed and we've potentially got one after that. Give me 45 total. Oh, just lock us in for the night. Locking in the arena, that would be fantastic, wouldn't it? <laughs> just shut the doors, mate. Leave us till the morning. We'll be fine. We'll, we'll still be about Siege. Into perspective, though. Obviously, with this being fixed, has run so dreadfully close. And with still final possible opportunity, does lead our up for this fight. Yes, it's an Oregon. Yes, we're expecting teams to be good on Fear X. It's almost unfortunate that it is, it is one of their better. But it isn't that a lot of teams out there will have a real not been too much plays from both sides. I think some of the covering their on we've seen freeze. They can burn this down at the minute. The time fight. Come down slow. Desperately trying. And he can just throw himself away immediately. the advantage as the player came off that plant they were able to close it out and fear x by the narrowest of margins are able to hold on to oregon what an oregon we have seen it's only map one it's only day two of the major and already we're getting blessed with maximum overtime games that are going the full distance what i will say think back to the fixture we've just watched Fear X, they were very pleased with themselves after the first map. The second map didn't quite go their way. I've got a sneaking suspicion this one is going to be a little bit more of the same. Yeah, I think Fear X, uh, the dream continues really, doesn't it? It's, they've had that result against G2. There's been ups, there's been downs. It was looking tough for them on Oregon, but they've been able to come away with the win overall. And I mean, <laughs> Can anything stop them at this point? It just seems like they've got some serious plot armor or something, <laughs> but nothing is going to stop them going through. It's getting close, though, isn't it? It's, it's getting pushed as close. I think the plot armor might be wearing a little bit thin as they move forward in this series, but for the time being, they've picked up the map, and more importantly, they've picked up their own map as well. That very easily could have gone toward bleed. A maximum overtime game. No one remembers the round count. The round count doesn't matter. It's the fact that you picked up the game. Forget about the round count now. Relaxing the fact, yep, okay, we won our own map. It wasn't ideal, but we've still won our own map. We've just got to now go through and win the decider. Yeah, I think ultimately um, you'll look at it and, and 
I said Oregon was really important for them because I'm expecting something good out of Bleed on Clubhouse. I almost feel like Map 3 is kind of inevitable at this yeah. point. You know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Fear X will come out and surprise us. But ultimately, um, you know, they've got what they needed to begin with. And that is get their map done. They can move on. They can give it their best shot on Clubhouse. But if not, they'll be going, what a finish on Chalet as well. An absolute <laughs> beauty of a map for it. But We're not even there yet. Calm down. We've not <laughs> got there yet. Um, but yeah, we will see Fear X maybe we can avoid that altogether. We're going to have a short break in between this and the next map. Don't go anywhere. A couple of minutes and we will be back with plenty more of this action.
welcome back to our final game of the day here at the Manchester Major. We've got Fear X. They've taken map one against Bleed. Having already beaten G2 and sent them home today, they are looking for another 1X. They want to send Bleed away as well and push themselves through to phase two. Serious conversations going on now before we head into Clubhouse. Who'd have thought that Fear X would be the juggernaut? Hey. Because you'll see, it was a was Fear X is we are getting stuck in now for a long haul. Yeah, definitely. A little bit of shallow. much success on it's kind of a bit to a bleed this is their opportunity you've also got they're fighting for their place in phase two the one like, away. right there it's, it's within touching distance so neither of them are going to be easy to beat and what i love throughout a difficult day today fear x in some big games have been smiling laughing and enjoying playing consistently throughout it and it is getting the job done for them we don't know how much fatigue's going to be creeping They're too much of a part, they bring their best, but we'll see as we continue whether it is a factor. It makes it easy to watch and it makes it easy to talk about as well when the teams are having a lot of fun and when you see Fear X there with a smile always on the face, come rain or shine. Not a lot of separating you in the sun. 54 to 46, so really, as far as you guys at home are concerned watching, this is anybody. when you jump on into the server. We've seen moments so far inside of the Manchester Major of Fear X taking their foot off the gas. We've seen moments of Bleed making a few basic errors. They lost 14 rounds in a row earlier today. It's very doable. There's a lot that rides on this, and just because it's a map that Bleed prefer and are a little bit better at statistically, it don't mean jack when you get into the server because it is about the game that is in front of you. Operator bands come through. We've got Maverick and Monte, no major surprises. Of course, Maverick, uh, you know, one of the go-tos for opening the hatches here on Clubhouse, so that's going to have to be Hibana instead. Tuberau taken out. Again, Tuberau can be particularly powerful, keeping those hatches closed, can burn away a good chunk of time. The Maverick band pretty much, uh, it doesn't draw out the Kaid band because, of course, VRX have banned both. Um, but ultimately, if you see one go, you're likely to see the other go as well. Yeah, that uh, that denial, it can, it can just really slow things down. And in the game that is all focused around three minutes being on the clock, anything that you can use to slow that down as a defender, the better. The Maverick band, of course, coming in there as well, as you've mentioned with the Monty backing it up. Monty used by both sides, really, to reasonable effect over on Oregon. It's, uh, it's going to be a, a popular band throughout the course of the major. Make no mistake on that. Obviously, you can't get rid of both shields. You're still going to leave a blitz open if you choose to remove a Monty and vice versa. But it is at least a start. Bleed starting things off here on the attack. Fear X starting things off on the defense. Gonna be Church and Arsenal to kick things off. No surprises. I would expect to see Fear X all over the map. I expect to see them up on the top floor as well. Um, and just really getting themselves into the mix everywhere. Just to send a message to Bleed to begin with. Yeah, they really don't want to uh, go in without anything less than a, uh, a full clear start here. Obviously, Starting off down inside of Church and Arsenal. No real need to roam on this map, but of course you can always get yourself out there and just pester on the staircases. That main stairs is a great point to start and just base yourself. You can see that's where Mephi is. 
got the option of going both up and down. You barricade off in toward bathroom, and you can just be a bit of a nuisance with a very easy get out. Mephis just going to be taking a little peek around the corner there. I think he knew that Reeps was present, but Reeps gets himself out of dodge, doesn't want to be taking that challenge. John knows it's too valuable with the ram. They wanting that into that kitchen corridor, wanting it into kitchen itself to use those boogie drones to open things up um, and see if they can get some movement inside that they can capitalize on. Mentalist. He's going to be pushing in as well, of course, on the Ossa this time. He'll be looking to try and get himself onto chains. Looks as though Kitchen Corridor is already entirely open. One of the benefits of bringing the ram. Reeps has been in there with a boogie and ripped it all open. And with that full map control, they can now start to open up some of those hatches and really start to put a little bit of pressure on. The time in air race isn't too bad from Bleed. They've done a good job. They've got the, got the map control. They've got things open. They've got Kitchen Corridor open. Moto Hatch is done. I think Kitchen Hatch might be done as well. And they've managed to push all the Romas back down. Oh, Kitchen Hatch isn't done just as of yet. But there is still plenty of tin openers that can get that job done. Um, yeah, they're going to be working their way down now, just trying to get the advantage of that verticality. It's time to start trying to move these defenders around and create new lines of sight, make sure that they're there to pick them up when they do move. That's the important thing. Yeah, you can get them out of position all you want, but you want somebody there to take a couple of shots at them as they go across, as they have to rotate, as they're forced out of those positions. Pick up a couple of kills, and then you've created that space that you need. Demic up inside of dirt could be a real big factor here um, later in the round. Rin is going to take out Asfi as the drop comes in. There's the kill from Good Boy. Demic doesn't even need to stray out of dirt yet, and that's why I say he's important, because he's giving this security to that warden that's playing in that power position in the corner. Five versus three, and Bleed's initial attempt towards site really hasn't worked out. And all the utility they've spent to do it has kind of just gone to waste. You had all the candelas available, you had some capital, you died as an osser because you had just peaked the wrong direction. Reed's going to try and salvage something, but that's all it ever is going to be. An exit frag there as Fear X clean up shop. We've got Demic from the Dirt Tunnel picking up those final two there. Got one under the hatch and one in Kitchen Corridor. Great stuff there from Fear X. I was going to be quite critical of them, Tim, because they only had tin openers. They only had secondary hard breach gadgets to get that kitchen hatch open. And I thought that there was going to be a bit more pressure on the impact trick. However, they did quite a good job because they got the ram into kitchen, they boogied open the floor, so no one's feeling comfortable to sit an impact trick that. And as such, it does get open. The biggest problem that I've got is you've tried to flash a warden and you've not turned your body in the right direction. As, as the osser as you drop, you've got to drop with that shield giving you that frontal cover. And if you're looking off to the side, you're going to give yourself away. Here, X then. Don't want to get too carried away for them just yet. There's a long way to go, but they come into Clubhouse, which is the map choice of Bleed, the map that they won against SSG earlier today that, you know, you look at and you think, on paper, Bleed should have a reasonable advantage here. But for X come in, not only picking up the first round, but doing it in, you know, reasonably comfortable fashion as well. Bleed not really able to make too much of an impact. Yes, we're expecting a strong half from Bleed when they're on the defense, um, but for X showing that they've got a defense of their own. Interesting site choice, CCTV and Cash, much more of a, a third site choice quite often now, um, rather than gym and bedroom. So a little bit of a choice there from Fear X, but I tell you what, if they can hold on to this and then go to gym and bedroom, there's a world where they get a 3-0 sweep to kick things off. Asfi going to try and get that wall open there into CCTV. Mentalist is going to join into the party as well. If there's a, a surefire way of getting the wall open, it is surely a little thermite-ace combination. No one immediately trying to bandit trick. Of course, you know that Cade's ban, you know two brows, not going to be a thing. So you can get that wall open with little resistance indeed. Now start to focus your efforts elsewhere. You're going to want to get the bottom of garage open. That's been done by Reeps. Part of garage actually being left soft there as reinforcements have been dedicated elsewhere. A clash on the rafters, though. Not the most ideal thing to try and face up against. It's going to be very difficult to clear, um, realistically. It's going to be down to the Capitao, mostly. Um, the Thatcher, of course, is going to be able to stop uh, the stuns as uh, the electricity coming in from the shield, but it might not be enough. Rin, he's actually going to de-shield and go for the pistol here. He's 
Only briefly going to go for that option. His teammate Nova has been taken out here. He's going to try and turn his back, but Hoven going to find himself a freebie onto Good Boy. Good Boy trying to plug the gap that Nova had left there and give Rin some support, but he's just been taken out on the rotation. This is great work here from Bleed. They're doing a good job of picking up kills, and they're not paying anything for him. And this is why sometimes it can pay to play that rotation between Catwalk and CCTV, because you don't have to come through the vault animation, you can keep yourself low, you can get yourself into that position. There's arguments both ways. It allows, obviously, the person on the bell to look in towards 90, so it's not always ideal. But this time, unfortunately, Fear X have been punished for it, and I did question the choice of sight coming in here. It's a tough one to hold on to, uh, you know, these days in the current meta, and Fear X are struggling with that. They do have gym and bedroom to go to next, so it's not the end of the world give it a try, see what happens, but it's really giving Bleed a bit of confidence. Five versus two at the minute, and Fearx haven't been able to get anything going, and I love that Bleed, uh, you know, they're just playing this absolutely textbook. They've got the breach, they've got the catwalk, they've opened up there, they've got control of Lounge with Hoven down there, they've an opportunity to plant, they're not going to need to, but they had all the pieces of the puzzle. Really nice attack. If you want to learn how to attack CCTV and Cash, go and watch that back, because Bleed had everything covered. They didn't even skip a step, even though they no. were miles ahead. They didn't need that to. was the most impressive yeah. thing. It was played out exactly as it should have been, even if you'd have had a guy with a C4, a smoke, everyone tucked into cash waiting to try and deny you. They played it absolutely textbook. Control of garage, masterful, dealing with the clash, getting that opening pick. All great stuff there, not skipping a single step, not getting ahead of themselves in any which way. Given too many problems there for Fear X to solve. And it was a force as well. Can't really ask for much more than that. I think it's very likely there it is that we see Jim and Bedroom next. CCTV cash, it can be a really tricky side. Obviously, you do have the Azami, you do have the Wamai, you do have ways and means of dealing with it, but it doesn't make it any easier. It can still be very tricky, especially if you're not going to try and play some heavy utility game on the main wall and bandit trick or do something of that nature. You really can get caught short. It's funny because the way that you defend gym and bedroom is you usually you defend inside of CCTV and cash. But the nice thing is, is you can leave at some yeah. point. You've got that option. You You've got that option to get out. Oh, I've had enough of this. Yeah. Um, whereas when that is the site, there is absolutely nothing. That is the rock behind your back as you try to push Position yourself secured. away. Good boy is going to be on the catwalk to kick things off, takes himself out of drone, but that's going to give away his position. Given his setup there and the fact that this wall is going to be open very, very quickly, um, he's going to find himself playing his life, essentially. This army is unlikely to be able to get away from here. Shouldn't be allowed to escape. He's got the rotation there. The wall has been open. Good boy needs to die on this catwalk one way or another if this is going to be a successful bleed attack. A little bit of drone work going through now. Good boy. Still trying to keep control of that garage. We had a gone six go out there as well. Reaps from below. Might be able to try and displace the player inside of cash, but he's going to go for a little bit of a walk here. He finds a couple of points of damage into Aspie, but can get himself back onto the balcony nice and safe. It's not going to be an easy task to root him out of there. Obviously, those Kiba barricades can be a bit of a nuisance. You might want to rotate your line around and use that DMR as a bit of a brute force to get through them. Mental is just waiting for the uh, EMP to head on over, I think, before he can clear out construction wall. There it goes. He will use the exothermic, and that's just going to cut off the rotation back to side. So Fearx have really got a decision to make now. And we actually see Demic in the process of making that decision on the bandit, and that is you get back to site now or you don't get back to site because the danger is you're going to get cut off from that new opening. Good boy is going to go all the way down into the basin, so he could be on a little flank attempt here. It's a little bit early in the round, so he'll likely hold his position for a little while probably wants to wait until about the 40 maybe 30 second mark before he tries to push up but they need to be cautious here they need to make sure believe that they've got those flanks locked down that they've got the drones there so they know exactly what's going on a minute left and still 10 players alive there was a bit of utility kicking around as well Mephi, you've got to try and back up out of that but you're never going to outrun reeks especially with him on book C8 is going to rip through you, like it or not. Finally, an opening here, an opening for four bleed. It is exactly what they need. Turnster can now start to rip open some of these barricades and DMR his way through the Kivas. Hoven 
with the next one through. There's a drone working for him here. He knows about the ah, map. Try and push the way through there, but it's all turned on the windows right now. 20 seconds left to go, but still an entry needs to be found. And Rin Demic, they're gonna start shutting things down here. Quick shot! Reaps. Solo survivor, 15 seconds. Fear X held on beautifully there. Really nice from them. Good boy partway through when he was down in the basement. Decided against the flank, came back up the main stairs. Did get picked up by a turd off the windows, but that was about as good as it got for bleed. And that's why I'd maybe expected to see that sight in the second round. But given that it's done, it's not really going to matter too much. We come out the same. Two wins, one loss for Fear X as they now head back down to Church and Arsenal. And honestly, they are looking good for this at the minute. There is a potential for them to come in here and take this away. The big question mark is going to be that second half. If they can get the 4-2 defence, great start. How are they going to do on the attack, though? Because that's when it becomes a lot more difficult for them as a team. That You know, this isn't maybe their number one map. That's where they're going to have to, you know, think outside of the box, problem solve a little bit more. It's not their setups anymore. They're having to play into what Bleed um, are setting up for them. So... It's all going well so far for BRX, but this isn't, a, as it's fair to say, the more difficult part of the game. Yeah, you've got to be willing to adapt and, and adapt on the fly. Um, look at Demick's position in there. There's no way you should get away with three. It's uh, pretty criminal. Let me show you for Jacuzzi Wall. We've got open there in that round. We'll have to go back and, uh, and watch again. But certainly a lack of uh, pressure coming in from the right direction, at least there from Bleed. They did just try and all funnel in. But they did also run out of time. Back downstairs we go. We're going to be attacking Church and Arsenal this time. Of course, with removing the Mav and the Monty, you leave things open like a Ying. The Ying wasn't used to devastate an effect last time. He never managed to get the Warden that was playing just in front of AKs in any sort of flash. Um, there was no secondary AMP to disable his gadgets. He was kind of looking the right way. And, well, Mentalist on the drop with the Osser Shield. It didn't work out as planned. He didn't successfully make that drop fully. It looks like that's the same idea this time from Bleed, but I imagine they're going to try and drop successfully this time and maybe just set themselves up a little bit beforehand. Shield deployed. Yeah, still got that little bit of a raw presence for Grid. Um, he's going to be need to be careful. Doesn't want to just overcommit there. Doesn't want to overstay his welcome. We're going to see them there falling back down. I think wise decision. Only a minute into things though, so that's good progress from Bleed. They've got themselves in quickly. They've got VRX all forced back. This is something that they were able to do in round one. They were able to hold on from this position, but it's always going to be difficult, of course, because the attackers now have got so much time. They can just work through open hatches, try and move you around, get the verticals. They've got everything they need. They've got the Ying. They've got the Ossa. They've got the Capitao. So they can deal with that corner where you're likely going to have good boy playing just inside of Armory where Dirt Tunnel Door is. Make it difficult for him to stay in that position as the Warden. He's currently tucked it's current, into yeah, blue. blue. And he's got the option to move into AKs quite easily there. It's Rin that's the one that you really want to be watching right now. He's going to make his rotation yeah, up and find himself a freebie onto Hoven like a thief in the night. Drops the hatch and he's out of there. That's really well played from Ren, I like that. Um, and that's something that Bleed are gonna need to be a little bit sharper on. There's only three defensive rounds left for them, but they can't be getting hit on the flank like that, especially on a site like Church and Arsenal. It's defender favorite. It's one of the strongest that we've got in the game at the minute, more than likely. Um, and you really can't be giving the defenders anything. They don't need any gifts. Uh, it's certainly stacked in their favor. A lot of utility dumped into blue here. Good boy has moved into that position, as I suggested, and he's still going to be trying to hold on to blue it's going to be difficult to move because of course of his own gadget but reaps manages to find the kill onto him that could be the key for bleed the last problem that they face really is going to be demic inside of dirt he could well this last 20 seconds the problem is this time they've not got the yings they've not now and you have got stuns and flashes to try and make some things. he's going to be trying to push through on the off shield he's got turned back to win this engagement, Asfi and Turd are both going to win that one. Plant was going down there, bleed. And Demick was waiting like a coiled spring there, but he too late. Oh, he didn't manage to get himself out in time. To bleed with enough room to be able to wander, take what they wanted, which ultimately was one for bleed. They've just got Church and Arsenal away from Fear X and it is now going to be to get that 4-2 half that you feel like they need 
Yes, I expect to be strong. Reload. So, I bleed. Jamie didn't leave himself. Because you can also, you can spring and then you can... But in the heat of the moment, there's few that can do both. 2-2 two, two, as... Nice and level moving into round number five. And then our screens. We are going to see a little... Bar. Personally, I just like this. I think it's a bold choice to say the But if Fear X are feeling like elsewhere isn't really working, then give it a go. Attackers are moving to... ...is going to be absolutely key here. It's something that we've seen Fear X struggle to when they were looking at CCTV cash. They were very... They were gym and bedroom. They did a great job of preventing, um, you know, that top floor from affecting them too much. So turning up here, but right now Bleeder putting the side of things. They're looking to force Demic out of there, which they so not quite in sync there. Window maybe yeah. he went through showers, so you're not gonna have the option of catching him coming through billiards. So uh, make sure they're a little bit sharper at being in position. Mephi's the thing that caught my attention about that was we saw he's playing the Valkyrie. He's no impacts and the hatch is closed. Watching for someone just to hop in very briefly and gain a little playing with that hatch open if you're going to be occupying that top. Picks up the opening kill anyway. So those Valkyrie can't. You're going to struggle to get a good handle on the Solace as well. Which Solace is excellent at getting rid of. That a little bit more difficult for bleed for here on. Still got defenders just roaming freely on this. All of the barricaded windows open onto the balcony. Yet. Time ticking by. Firex doing a good seconds at the minute. Hoven has got himself into a pretty billiards though, using the knock scanner to make sure as he creeps through, gets himself into showers, and that could kitchen now they've got Demic stuck there's no way he drops down to the basement he's going to find himself in some he's actually managed to just wander up those main stairs and they could Rx with a knock on their flank doing some not careful Hoven ready and waiting looking to cut these players across but he's there he gets one onto rear it was very scrappy Knock gadget and hide away from the camera because he knows that pre fire coming around. There is only one reason that you no, know he is there. Go to the call, gonna rinse people off. He's gonna smash good boy to the ground. Taken out. Asfi can now start to try and get this plan down. Will be yes, it will. The dog could be called. It was a bit too cold on site. Two kills come for Novi, but mentally. The problem here could be that early death of Reaps on the are difficult to pick up. Hover manages to find it, but he is there for the kill whilst he's looking up at the ceiling. Ten seconds to chase him down. Mephi, he's just running. He finds the kill and somehow Fear X on stage. They are not doing anything, but they are getting the job done. One round. We doubted the side choice. We said it was a roll of the dice. We said it down to a 1v1. It comes down and the one because the echo is running in the other direction. But absolutely brilliant from Bleed. But they just kind of got outplayed a little bit. We commented losing the IQ first and foremost. Left. The dog could be called. It was too early. The plan was going down, but by that time, the call had been cancelled and we're back into the Yokai drone to deny the plan. Give that player a little bit more time to get in position, then do the call. The plan probably goes down there, and then you're in a post with a blitz. It's a nightmare. Really well played from Mephi in that 1v1 versus the blitz as well. Uh, if you're ever having to deal with a blitz on your own, how do you deal with them? You create as much distance as you can. You need to get outside of that flash cone, essentially. You know, if you're in a position whereby that shield can't be utilized to full white flash you, then the best it can do is block a few of those bullets. But you also saw Mephi aiming at around feet height, just looking for the legs, looking to pick up those bullets that he knew might just find them because with 10 seconds, he's predicted it right. Mentalist is 
has no choice but to be sprinting after him. He knows he can't be coming around with those feet covered with in crouch with the shield down. And it was just really heads up play from Mephi in a 1v1, 10 seconds to go. There's a lot of things running through your mind there and he's made some really good decisions. Chance for Fairex on a 4-2 split here equally. Bleed could come away with a 3-3. Three, three. He commented that it was a bit of a roll of the dice going to the bar and stage site. This time we are going to be going back upstairs to the gym and bedroom. Demick is going to be successful there on the trick. Bit of a rookie mistake. You've lost an ex-thermic. You have also lost an ace, Selma, and an ace. As good boy picks himself up too. Not only that, you've lost the Thatcher. The whole kit and caboodle are getting hard walls open has just been ripped away right there. I'm going to make a prediction. Um, that wall's not getting opened. Uh, <laughs> That's not going to happen. They've lost their EMPs. Uh, they've only got one exothermic charge left. Reaps gets an absolute freebie onto Good Boy, though. And those are the kinds of mistakes that could cost Fear X rounds that should be theirs. At the minute, they're still in the driving seat. Four versus three. And as I said, it's going to be very, very difficult here um, for Bleed to be able to break Drones this defense online. down because they're not going to be able to get those walls breached. Mephi just relocated himself at this point. He's just going to be looking to hold that angle and now put, stop them pushing through. And, Look how much time, how much lies, how much utility has been burnt. So at this point, Fear X can fall back fairly comfortably. Safe in the knowledge that, yes, CCTV and cash might be lost, but taken a oh, heavy toll in doing so. You took half the round, you took two players, you took half the drones. You're going to be pretty happy with that. Yeah, you've got turns who's going to be trying to get something happening here on the windows. DMR will rip through that Cuba barricade. Of course, as army can keep replacing them as long as they regenerate. And with a bit of control now inside of construction, you can start to see that Bleed are starting to try and salvage a bit of a push here. That bulletproof won't be shootable from the outside. You won't be able to get the angle onto the side, but you might not need it if Reeves just pushes on in, finds one before being traded. This is the advantage that Fear X have got. They can trade one for one all day because they have the advantage right now. Managed to pick up another rim finds third on the window. He's tried to pull a gym window last time around as well. Got one then, but didn't manage to make too much of an impact. Mental is looking to push in behind the flash, but is going to be cut down by Demic. And that is the 4-2 half that Fear X were looking for. That gives them a platform at least to head into this second half. Important round coming up. If they can grab their first attack here, if they can get this done, it's 5-2, and they are two rounds away from heading into phase two here in Manchester. Honestly, with the way they've been playing in the last couple of rounds, I know we gave it the big in about how oh, this is a good map for bleed, but it's a game of siege. Anything can happen when you get in the server and Fear X are proving that right here, right now. Somewhere that they are shining here on Clubhouse is in that entry. They picked up all but two entries, so four entries so far. Rin, Mephi, oh sorry, Rin's picked up two, Mephi's had one and Good Boy the other. I mean, Good Boy got a 2K there on the entry, so you've got to give him a little pat on the back for that. It's just a little bit extra, a little bit of something fancy. But they've put themselves firmly in the driver's seat here. They now switch over onto the attack. They've got the same tools of Available to them that Bleed had. Can they make this work? Bleed on the other to, on the other hand, this is when the pressure starts to get in. When you're fighting for your life, you've already a map down. Remaining. You can't afford to make many more mistakes here. The opportunities they are Five dwindling, they are slipping insertion. through your fingers. As you say, the further we go, the fewer and far between those opportunities will be found. Going to be a heavy presence up on the top floor, reinforcements and all, a little bit of utility up there. So Bleed wanting to get out in the map and give Fear X some problems to solve. Get a few roamers out there and try and burn some time. Um, to be fair, Fear X, when they're working together, when they're going together, it's not really a major problem that they've had. It hasn't been sort of problem solving and, you know, clearing areas and playing within a certain amount of time. It's not been a big factor. We've not seen them losing rounds because the clock has run down too often so might not be the biggest problem for them here and as you can see 40 seconds in they're straight into the map x they're not messing about they're looking for those roamers up on the top floor the drones are going across they're not going to be slowed down by just putting a couple around the map good discipline get some pre-placed drones out there establish that that top floor is clear and then secure the flanks you need a camera for blue you need a camera for oil pit and you need a camera for main stairs once those are being actively watched then you can start to move in and start to make things happen. That's when you want to get your ram in if you've got it, or your book, in this case, with Good Boy. That's when you want to start trying to spot people out for Demic to be spotting out on the Deimos. 
All of a sudden, these things start to uh, start to happen. Methy can get in and, and start to work these hatches, and all of a sudden, you're not making too bad time. You've still got to then maintain and keep up this pace, though, because there's other little mini games to deal with. We've got the Kiba barricades, we've got the Vulcan canisters, we've got these mirror windows as well. They're going to be a bit of a problem. Yeah, all solutions that are going to need to be found by Fearx. Halfway through the round, Hatch in the kitchen is not open yet, so still um, some work to be done. They're on with that now, uh, but again, they may well find themselves playing this little impact trick game as we can see Mentalist just moving around to the correct side, takes the pellets off. It's going to be another 10, 20 seconds before we see this hatch open now, so we're going to be down to maybe 50 seconds remaining. Mentalist still in this power position, as I've said. He's got the Keeper Barricade back him into blue he's got astri in dirt as well lots to be broken down from this defense but look at this it could be the push coming through astri might find himself in some serious pressure very soon you'd hope he's got an f9 activated here and we can see that he does on the screen but it's still going to be a horrible engagement as soon as nova gets black he could just choose to push through and that's exactly what he does immediately rinsed though by mentalist as mentalist came to back up his teammate Good boy now going to try and throw some flashes down of his own, but he's lost his big pushing power. Win the next player to fall. Aspie takes a swing, full white flashed, and will be punished for it, but still an advantage remains for Bleed. I love that from Mentalist. Just such heads up play. Knows that the push is coming down dirt, so he goes and backs his man up, finds a double in there, and that really breaks the back of what Fearx are trying to do on the attack. That right there is experience coming to the fore. Mentalist with a really key moment in that round. Well, if you know there's a blitz there, there's a very good chance someone's behind it. Exactly. Because this is what people are doing nowadays. You're playing it. I mean, they've always done it. But playing on the shoulder of a shield is a great spot to be in. And he's not going to let his teammate be hitting a two for one. He's not going to give Asfi away. He's not going to sell him. No. Nah. Love to see it. Really well played from Mentalist. Really well played from Bleed. Solid defence. In honesty, aside from that push down dirt tunnel, very little pressure on into sight at any point. Uh, you know, everybody in church could pretty much sit hands off at yep. that point and just wait to see how the round played out, get on the camp, speed in for everything that they could do um, to assist the rest. It was just, yeah, really nice from Bleed. What was the bug doing? Why are we allowing impact tricks? Why are you not bringing the ramp? If you're not going to play in there, throw the boogie in, rip the floor open, and stop someone from being able to impact trick. Feels like, again, maybe Fearx just getting a little bit ahead of themselves, not completing those earlier steps, um, you know, and just seconds. thinking, right, let's get on with this, let's yeah. get on with that. With a minute left, we've got to get that done. Um, and like you said, just shows Five the importance, really, of, you know, putting one before two when it comes to siege, because otherwise, Attackers two doesn't work. To locate a bomb and it. Upstairs we go, gym and bedroom. Nice little castle setup coming here from Aspie. Castle is a firm favourite of mine, I think, for this side. If I was to guess at Castle's most popular side, it's got to be this one in the entire game. Someone will have a stat, but I'm going to go out there and say that it is because you've got so many options. We've already seen how devastating the windows can be. Of course, they are removed and they have to be removed as well. Those castle barricades, they are going to soak up a little bit of util. You're going to bring the old Habana to try and deal with that. A couple of Xkaros pellets is going to get you everything that you wish. You can destroy the castles, you can get the hatch into Lodgy, but you're not always going to have enough to get everything else open as well. So you are going to have to then start to make a few decisions. It looks like the decision at the moment for Fear X is that they want to get a little bit of this jacuzzi wall open. However, Mentalist is going to be in position to trick. Now, he might, he's going to get one off, but he's not going to stop the important one. He's not going to stop the exit permit. No, and that's why you play one on either side. Uh, you know, it's rare that we'll see both of them tricked off. I think we did earlier on in we the did. game. We did. But, um, you know, <laughs> very, very rare looking. that you will see that. So, again, if it's something you're struggling with, bandit tricking has been a very real thing lately. You can play them because uh, you can put two on one reinforcement, so you can kind of play them in between those EMPs, even a double EMP, it can be worked around. So if you're struggling with that, try and get your ace, get your uh, your exothermic at the same time, bang one on either side. Um, it can work with a Habana as well. It's a little bit more difficult because the Xkaros pellets take a little bit longer to detonate. But overall, yeah, definitely doable. And it just really helps prevent that bandit tricking. So it's going to be blocking up these windows now and forcing a couple more Xkaros pellets to be used. There's Keep only two left now as well, so you're left with shooting them with the DMR or, of course, with a regular gun as well. You can you hit them if you like, but it's all just things to consider, and it's all things that, slowly but surely, are really chimbling away at the time available to Fear X here. There's a minute left. Everyone's alive. 
they've managed to get a jacuzzi wall open, but they haven't breached that next level. They've almost not got the ideal line of sight open because they've got the long line open. They haven't got the short line. They're now going to try and open up into shower, but even that won't be successful. A slew of kills as Mephi. He just takes the ball by the horns there, Ace, and picks himself too. That's great. That's exactly what they needed. Somebody to just go in and create a little bit of space. Reese manages to fight back with one onto rim. Three versus three as Turd picks up good boy. And this is all falling apart a little bit for PRX here. Mephi went in and created some space, but they can't get much more until Nova finds Hoven. It's all up to Reeps and Turd. Just trying to rotate around here. Maybe Turd trying to get himself into logistics, but no, he hits the 180 and he's going to go back into sight. They tried for the plan, but they didn't stick it. However, they double up on main stairs. Nova Demic one apiece, and they are one round closer to taking Clubhouse and taking themselves into phase two. Fear X, they keep fighting. Brilliant situational awareness from Demic there. I had a smile on my face as he picked up that final kill. He's hiding behind a horrible one way behind the Akiba barricade. He's an attacker. He shouldn't be allowed to do that. He's got himself so deep into the site. He's now picking people off for free with the very utility the defenders laid to protect themselves. Bleed. Or at least Julio is going to choose now as the all important moment. This is when Bleed are going to use their tactical timeout. I believe the Fear X still have a timeout as well. What round is it that we're going into next? Um, let me have a look. Five plus three, add one. We're going into round nine. Funny how that works. Yeah, round number nine. Ace of Pyrite's favorite round and one that we've always said is a very important so round important. inside a siege. This is where we either go six three and it looks very doable. <laughs> it, it, so I'm not gonna say guaranteed nailed on, but it's getting close. They're starting to print the letter in and it, get the I glue think ready. I think if get this round, I think they will be very difficult to beat, is what I will say. I know that's kind of, you know, it's easy to say it. They're going to be on that point, of course. But, but what I mean by that is their performance, their mentality within the team. Yeah. I think it's going to be, you know, very difficult to pry that place out of their hands at that point because they will have, you know, sort of one hand looking towards next week thinking, you know, we're, we're nearly there. We've nearly got a hold of it. Yeah. I think it's going to be very difficult to drag them away from it. I think they'll fight tooth and nail at that point. Um, you know, as they already are, really, but I just feel like it will give them that extra 10% if they can get them at point. So absolutely essential one coming up for bleed in my mind. You're fighting for one day off or a lot of days off really, aren't you? You either get one day off on the Saturday and get straight into the Sunday or that is yeah, going to be it. Let's have a look and see how round number nine shapes out then. This all important round that we do like to go on about. We're going back upstairs, gym and bedroom Attackers yet again. A bomb. Changing tact a little bit. Now, we had Mentalist on the Bandit last time, and he was Bandit tricking that Jacuzzi wall. This time, he's switched over, and he's gone onto the Mutes. They're going to try and limit some of that information gathering. They're going to try and limit some of that drone work that Fearex are trying to pull off. And instead, Aspie's going to go onto the Bandit and see if he can't trick himself something up. Gonna have Nova repositioning across the rooftop, wanting to get the next opening Activate dealt with. Gonna be over to Jacuzzi Wall, I would imagine. Um, he's got Demic in support as well. Just making sure they're not going to get run out on, but the EMPs will be there if needed when the time comes. Mep is going to be drawn in, in underneath, make sure there's nobody on strip. They're very concerned about that potential run out coming out here from Bleed. Um, I don't know if it's maybe something we can see them do previously or just a general concern, but we've got claymores, we've got drones, we've got a lot stacking up, and it suggests that there's going to be a lot of work being done from this side. Uh, you know, we're going to have probably good boys sitting on this rappel for a little while, maybe, uh, just to try and hold that long angle down towards main stairs. A little bit of action on these Valkyrie cameras now. Turd, just seeing what it is he is able to spot. Bleed obviously recognising they need a little bit more information. And Turd maybe being told, look, you need to play a little bit more ratty. Something that's worked really well for Bleed is Turd playing that bit more of a rat role. And we've not seen him do that so far. I don't know if that's the pressure of the match. I don't know if that's something that's, you know, sort of been directed toward him. But he is that player that has that potential. And so far, we haven't really seen it all too much here tonight. Reeps has been doing his normal thing, getting all the kills in sight. In terms of the rest of the squad, it, it has been a little bit quiet. We haven't seen those typical characteristics that we often do. So maybe this is the round where they just try something a little bit different. Mephi, gonna try and 
master himself in. He's got a glimpse there, and he's going to find him through the smoke. Methley, he can now charge his way up main stairs. Look at the confidence that he's moving with here. Ashley, he's going to find one onto Demi, but Methley can't be stopped. He's going to pick himself up a third if he's not careful, and there it is. Four versus two now as Fiorex have taken ground, taken lives, and they could be about to take themselves onto a map point. Mentalist just trying to hold on for dear life instead of showers. He's being supported by Reeves. He's backed up, but Rin finds him. Immediate trade, 1v2, shut down by Nova, and that's going to be Fiorex taking an important round nine and themselves on to map and series point. Now it all starts. Fear X, they might about to be the Reapers of phase one. They've already knocked out GT. The meme writes itself. It writes itself. They're on the precipice of knocking bleed out. Yep. Which in the context of things, I would say is impressive. Overall, when we spoke yesterday, and we said, for argument's sake, the favourites here are, and I will still back this, G2, SSG and Liquid. Yeah. And we're going to have what the best of, of the rest will go through. I thought, personally, that Bleed were at least a top two shout for that. If not the favourite of the rest. Um, you know, obviously there's Cyclops as an option, um, but I would have gone probably for Cyclops or Bleed as my team that are likely to, to get through to phase two alongside the others. Um, you know, given the fact that G2 have fallen out, that's allowed room for another one to go through of those two. But I really would have put Bleed up there. They've been I would. a fantastic yeah. team. You know, we've seen Five them go over the last 12 months, not yep. just recently. Um, and this is... A real turnaround for PRX. This is a team that finished fourth place in the uh, in the Korean group stage. They then lost in the playoffs. It, it was enough to get them into the playoffs. They got to the final. They lost to PSG Talon, who went straight into phase two. They had to go through LCQs, which they did. And they got themselves here. And, you know, yeah, we looked at them and said, how much are they going to do? How much are they not going to do? And they have answered their critics today. Oh, there is no two ways about it. Absolutely. I was one of the neutral fans that bleed one over in Atlanta because I wasn't working the event. We were, we were doing a little bit of podcasty stuff about it. And they were one of the teams that I was really enjoying watching. I was enjoying all of the content that the team brings along with itself, the Joel getting all into it. And I do believe that they've caught a lot of mutual fans. I think that Fear X are doing exactly the same here and have done previously. They've put on a masterful display today and they now sit one round away. We've got a very good chance of getting this done, but Hoven isn't going to go down without a fight. Finally, for the first time in a long time, we're going to see an opening pick go in Bleed's favour. Yeah, they're having none of it. They're going to dig their heels in. Uh, they've got the good sight. They're down on Church and Arsenal. They should definitely be able to hold on to this. You look at this, you look at Jim and Bedroom. I know they've just struggled in the last round, but really it's two rounds that they should be able to lock down and get themselves back to 6-5, take us into round 12. It's the mental game that comes into things now. You know, how much is that going to be playing on them, knowing that they are only one round away from going out of this thing? Right now, Fearx, 1 minute 30. They're in and they're working. They're opening up some verticals. They're going to work towards the hatch. Last time around, X, they were... They were poor in their, you know, checklist mentality. Yes. Clubhouse is a big checklist map. They were doing things out of order. They were trying to open the hatch before they opened up the floor, for example. They weren't following the steps. Let's see if they can do better this time. Losing good boy isn't going to help them too much either. He's 4-10 and ten right now, which is crazy to say. But obviously the ash has been brought for a very important purpose, and that purpose is to get rid of those mirror windows. Now, we have had the hatch open this time. The impact tricking hasn't been too successful. As you can see, Attackers the Xkaros count is still relatively Attackers healthy. There's six left kicking around at the moment. I do worry a little bit with the position of Fear X because it looks like they're getting ready for a bit of a drop, but there are going to be Vulcan canisters that are going to stop them from doing that for at least the next 20 seconds. Nova is going to stun himself down and allow Mephi to push on through. We've got a bit of sense action coming on here as well, but Mephi is going to fall there to the C4. Turd is downed in sight, but still, this is firm advantage bleed as Nova is the only player left surviving. He can pick up a defuser, but what can he do? No one's even dealt with the FNAT team. It's still active up there. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think again, just for your X, feeling to clear out some of that important utility before they went in. Bleed, a good round from them. I want to give credit where it's due. Um, hitting uh, some beautiful nitros there. Just a lot of work to keep hold of blue and just really keep hold of as much ground as they could down there. Not allow themselves to be bullied from multiple angles. It was good from Bleed. They bring themselves back within two. There's no more mistakes for them. They need another two rounds. And rather than gym and bedroom, they're going to be heading to see CCTV and cash. It's a bit of a gamble. One round at a time for Bleed here. It really is one round at a time. Problem is, you get yourself into a territory now where Firex, they only need to get lucky once. They don't even need to play well. No, exactly. You know, you pick up an opening kill, double down on it, and you're 5v3. Done. Little window, barricade, bang, whatever it might be. It doesn't need to be anything too crazy. These things do well, happen inside of this game that we all love. Fear X still on that map and series point. Thing is, with the way that Oregon went, are we expecting anything but an overtime? I don't know, you were asking for 45 rounds an hour ago. You might be about to get it, depending on how the next couple go. But for the meantime, with Fear X so tantalizingly close. And they've got a bit of a map count, a round count advantage here. It might be time to try something. Look at that for a lineup. That's a sigh, of, <laughs> a sigh of despair. Sometimes you got to make a move to try and get it over the line. You know, I'm not going to say it's trying to cheese around because I don't think it is. But, you know, we've seen these operators coming in. You know, Ying, obviously super popular. Um, but we've seen plenty of the Blitz play um, from Fear X. It's usually Nova that's on the Blitz. This time it's going to be Demic. They are ready to go here. They're just going to try and rush this one over the line. Mephi, he's just going to explode on into sight. Here he goes, but no, cut down by Aspe. Oban finds Mephi, and it's all falling apart for Fear X as Bleed. They hold on fantastically well. A double from Mentalist leaves us in a 5v1 with a failed rush on the hands of Fear X. I saw the light up, and I saw the future. I did not like the look of it one little bit. Well, this is the time where me and Ace now have to talk for two whole minutes whilst Nova sits on the roof and has a little bit of an impromptu tactical team talk. This is a tactical team talk, an unofficial one. Very tactical. Quite often we'll talk about these moments and, you know, it's not always the case that players are doing this to have a chat. Sometimes they will sit and see if somebody sticks their head in a window and they can maybe bring the odds back in their favour. He's, the, he's, he's launching Candela straight up in the air. I don't think this is about seeing if anybody's going to give him a cheap kill or two, I'll be honest. This is about having a chat with the team. How do we get this over the line? This is, we are 6-5 now. We've got one more opportunity before we go into a second map of overtime. How do we make sure that we get this done? We've tried the rush, it's failed miserably. I think that's the only way that we can categorise that. Um, you know, bleed stacked up to that beautifully. For me, it was Asfi. As Mephi comes in through that window on the Amaru, he's the one that's got a real opportunity to make a difference. If yeah. he hits that kill straight onto the bandit, he turns left, he starts picking up kills into cash, and he can clear out sight really quickly. But Asfi just reacted really, really well. Don't forget, Amaru was changed a little while back, and the uh, sound cue for that animation was brought to a later point. It mm. used to be that you'd hear the zip, then the barricade would go, and you had that little bit of warning. There's a lot less warning now on the Amaru. It's more pretty much just as you hit the barricade. So it was well played from Asfi. Great reactions and mentally stepping up with a big double on the mirror as well. Very long conversation here from VRX. Well, it's this two is minutes. Well beyond your normal tactical timeout. This is a real solid oh, yeah. discussion. Well, there was one minute 56 left on the clock. I remember when I looked at it. So they've been chatting for a full two minutes here. Ten seconds and remaining. you can only hope that it's been it's been good for them because there is, of course, the very real possibility that Bleed is sat there going the same. Bleed aren't sat there right now going, I wonder where he's coming from. Can you hear anything? <laughs> Have you got this cam? Who's watching? The they don't care. They know the game. They've played the game. They know what's going on. And they too have had a time. Obviously, you've not got your I think, coaching ball I think the this. second that they hear the candela go off outside. Oh, yeah. Well they aware. know what's happening at that point. You haven't got your coach involved for this conversation, obviously. It's just a conversation between the players. 
Oh, it's actually Hoban that picked up Mepi, and Aspi got Rinu tried to bowl in behind him, so they tried to double down on that window, right? Um, but either way, you know, the reactions there from both of them were fantastic to make sure um, that that was locked down and that they were aware of that potential danger. There just wasn't enough going on for that rush. No, you there needed wasn't. another element. You need book below, something. more sound, catwalk. Yeah, you need a bit of pressure you garage need door. You, if you got pressure garage door, Hoban can't stand and yeah. watch that window. Um, you know, maybe a little bit of action, maybe an EM thrown up over the top so that it detonates near the wall so the bandits thinking oh, right, here we go here yeah. we go you know <laughs> I'm on off to work I'm on yeah Oh, that's, that's my cue. Yeah, the EMP got no, that. That is, cue. you need something. You, just, yeah. you know, and it doesn't have to be that you have to be in that location. I'm saying the EMP can just be thrown up over yeah, the roof. Yeah, it's going to do the job. Um, it's going to just give that little bit of a, an alternative uh, avenue of attention for Lee to, to try and look at. But nope, they are going to go to gym and bedroom. The problem that they've got here is that this site is the only site that they've lost, and they lost it back to back, round eight, round nine. They lost it twice. Played it twice, 0% win rate in this matchup. VRX, they need to get it done here and now. Fearing, I remember they brought a glass previously, didn't they? And Mephi was really yes, effective on that glass. Instead. Just walked up main. Yeah. That's not, well, he's not on the glass this time. There's not really much stopping him walking up main. He's on the Ying, so he's unlikely to. But there is quite a lot of pressure on this. Again, it was one of those rounds where Turd was trying to play out of the way. He was trying to rat out for a kill. It looks, you get the feeling he's doing that again now. He's on the Solace. There is no bigger rat operator at the moment than a Solace doing this sort of thing. That Castle Barricade is actually going to get ripped down and replaced there. It's a very smart thing to do because the Castle Barricade actually goes back into his pocket and he can redeploy it. So you've just burnt another two at his Kairos. It's a little bit risky. It was a risky move. There was somebody sat watching it, but it didn't matter. Um, as you say, it did just burn. Yeah, it burns two X Kairos. It burns 10 seconds. But if you win the round by 10 seconds, then you've just won the round with taking the Castle Barricade down. So, you know, really well played there from Astrid. Uh, we're going to see the push come on in towards Cash and CCTV now. That's unfortunate. Nova just missing that shot with the Grim. It's going to just allow uh, potential presence around the top of Red Stairs, but that's not going to be the case. There wasn't anybody there to, to punish them for that. So not the end of the world, but Turd is hiding away down in dirt. He's going to go and knock a hole in that soft wall and see if he can catch anybody going onto Jacuzzi Wall, I would imagine. The big problem is, is that we can see from the overhead, no one's there on Jacuzzi Wall, and he's also quite far away from his team. So his team are one man short on the side right now. And if that is something that Fearx get wind of, or even more importantly, they manage to get a kill onto site, then it does start to become quite devastating. We've got Rin out on the balcony right now, just seeing if he can peek and prod and pick anything up. The typical angles that are being checked, but obviously no one going to be exposing themselves to that. But with 55 seconds left to go, it's a very one-dimensional across player all until good boy. He's going to reposition Aspi. He's going to find a nice opening kill there on to Rin, removing that Hibana, but Turd on the flank could be devastating, and he's going to find one for free. They've just not picked up on him at any point in Dirt Tunnel or elsewhere, and he has now really hurt them. It's not just about the kill, it's the fact that they know that he is on that cash side. They have to push forward. There's 28 seconds, the time dictates that, but they're going to be able to do nothing about Turd, and they know that he's a constant danger. There's one on main stairs, everything's stacking up against them, but Messi manages to find one. Asfi and Reed however they find two and that takes us to overtime another map another overtime another map where we say well you know this team's really good at it this is their map this is their preference we're dealing with oregon and clubhouse here the first two maps in this best of three we're expecting every team to be good at them we're expecting every team to be competitive and there's nothing separating these two right now fear x they are going to take their time out now I don't think there's any value in taking it earlier than this because they had a couple of round lead. They tried a rush round. That's it's one of those things. It's isn't always it? that two sides of you the coin. You don't want to give that momentum chance you're, away. You're giving it to bleed, you're giving them the same opportunity to have the discussion. Um, you know they come in here on the attack. If we look at how the halves have gone, the advantage is with the defenders. So bleed. You know they may have something here where they can push us through to Chalet and. Then you've got to ask questions if we do go to that third map. How hard does that hit for X? They've had three rounds. They've had three rounds, three opportunities to close this out and get themselves through. And I look at it and I just think Fear X got, got slammed by G2 in map two and then came back. <laughs> you can't question them. the mental. 
you can't question the mental, but I look at it and I think, are they going to do anything the easy way? No. Or is the third it's map inevitable here? It's is all going to be hard work. Go. You cannot question that team's mental. To go from 0-7 to then taking Skyscraper off G2 was impressive enough. They had a good fight back over in the mid part of Oregon. They've had a great fight back here as well. They're showing fantastic heart throughout all of these fixtures. But I still don't believe they're going to go about anything the easy way. Church and Arsenal is going to be the defensive side of choice for Bleed to kick things off. Uh, they won this in round seven. They won it in round 10. In round 10, it was flawless. It's not been an easy site for BRX to try and attack into here. And um, they've never really gained too much ground. Last time around, they tried to push down Dirt Tunnel, as we remember. It sort of fell apart. Mentalist recognised the danger, got himself involved. He was on the KE, I think it was the KE that time. Um, he certainly had the TCSG. He can't be on the KE because he was banned out, but he had the TCSG as he went in. Um, but this time, he's going to be on the Warden instead. And he's going to be looking to... Hold that same position, I would imagine. He's going to be in and around AKs, just trying to use those glasses, hold down blue, hold down kitchen drop, and make life difficult. Meanwhile, Firex straight into the map. They've shown us this previously, an ability to get in quickly, confidently behind drones, take ground, take space, and then use it. They just need to use it to better effect. Yeah, the pacing, it's been a little bit up and down from Firex. And this looks like one of those rounds that could be a little bit on the slower side of things. They seem pretty happy that everything's clear at the moment and maybe just setting up some drones. Good boy will lose a drone there as Hoven just threatening on that main stair. Very popular position to play in, but slowly but surely the hatches will start to get open. We are going to see the ram boogie gadget there. It's going to be destroyed actually, the first one, but Kitchen Mob will be allowed to go through and that is going to deter anybody from getting that impact trick off. It's something we've already spoken about. His army hasn't got any impacts left, but at this point in the game, Fear X probably do not know that. No, no. Uh, they are going to get a lot of the work done that they need then. They've got the verticals, they've got the hatches. It's now about positioning and how do you get yourself um, with the utility cleared, but more importantly, how do you get these bleed players moved? They particularly need the player out of AKs. They need to move Aspi out of dirt because if they do kill Mentalist, Aspi can still peek around that same corner. So the next problem to be solved by them is going to be the push into dirt. Will it go any better than it did last time. They're using the same Mephi on glass technique. Get some smoke in there. Try and push through behind that. Asfi, he will hear the smoke and maybe give it a little bit of a pre-fire, but he should really wait for his FNAT here until he makes the killer move. The FNAT, of course, is going to mess Mephi up a little bit here and he won't be able to see too clearly through that. And Asfi can swing easy as you like. Good boy will get one in the meantime, though. And Hot Drop comes through, but immediately dealt with Mentalist. He's in the hot seat here. A C4 goes out. Surely he'll find one. No, just a ton of damage over onto Good Boy. Good Boy will find one onto Reaps, though, leveling things out. And he's going to actually try and get the plant down here, Tim. I don't know how good the cover's going to be. Rin is in the perfect position on the hatch, but they just need to move themselves around. There's the kill that they needed. Mentalist finding Rin, and Mentalist finding another. I picked up on Mentalist. On the warden in by AKs, super important power position, and he's just shown us exactly why. Triple kill, it's one as they drop, then can't quite catch the man who goes for the plant, but does eventually find him. Also hits the shot up through onto Rin. Beautiful stuff from Mentalist, locking down that site again for Bleed. And for the first time on Clubhouse, Bleed find themselves in the lead. Seems crazy because it was very late on in Oregon that they found themselves it's going to be very late well. when this finishes you mark my words <laughs> there's a lot more siege to be played yet there really is that. Back, back, back. Cool. I've seen a couple of games along the way and I've got a feeling this one's going to three <laughs> oh, I, I'm, I'm in no doubt I'm in no doubt it's going to three I'm absolutely here for it but I also think that if we do get to a chalet which is let, let's be honest looking quite likely probably be a long chalet <laughs> Not a lot separating these two tonight, but this is exactly what we want. We're fighting for elimination. We're fighting for a spot in phase two. We don't just want to be handing these out to anybody. You've got to earn it, and you've got to earn it against your opponent. And so far, there is only one round separating these two, and there hasn't been much separating them all series long. You can see there in the top right of your screen, Oregon was won by Fearex at a scoreline of eight to seven. They would have to get the same scoreline here and now if they want to take Clubhouse. Bleed, however, they are on a map point 
and they are going to look to try and convert it. They're going to be attacking into gym and bedroom. BRXN, let's see if the mental resolve is as strong as it has been throughout the day or whether Bleed are able to break them. They got mentally stacked up on that wall. We've seen some successful bandit tricking so far. Will that be the case? This time the Zafir has been brought along. Demix going for it. Has the second Zafir gone through in time? Yes, it has. And that is going to allow the wall to be opened up. We see Demix rotate himself straight back away towards construction. That's going to allow Good Boy to drop a little bit deeper. Mephi likely to play his life at the top of Red Stairs. He's just going to be holding with that warden. He wants to take at least one with him and as much time as possible. Mephi will be getting droned out here, and he's conscious that he might not even be able to rotate, so Reaps might be forcing him into a position to play that with his life there. Another drone going to come in, and he really is starting to feel and see this pressure right now. No one immediately challenging him. He just knows that he's getting held this way, that way. He will eventually make that transition and just hop up onto a table inside of Cash. Done a good job at burning a little bit of time there, and I'll be honest, I don't think Bleed know where he is right now. Mephi has actually managed to escape with his life. Quite often the player at top red, uh, you know, will stay there till the absolute death, but halfway through the round decides that his gun will be more valuable inside of sight. So that gives Bleed control over that side of the map. They can get themselves up red, get into construction, start to put pressure towards sight now. But it's feeling a little bit like Fearx are in some fairly comfortable control of things at the minute. Yeah, Fearx don't seem too worried right now, and they don't really need to be. They've got established positions. They've still got a lot of utility kicking around. We've got a C4 on the mirror. The mirror windows, I believe, at this point are still intact. We do have a heavy establishment outside. Players looking to play from outside to in. I think uh, Demick's actually going to pop his own mirror window there just to give another little option later on into the round. The first down will come through. It hasn't been converted just yet, but Good Boy is unlikely to be recovered. And it's going to be Hoven that credits him with that kill. Rin with an extremely aggressive jump out there. Turd's fortunate that he had the foresight to put a Claymore down for that one. Yeah, it certainly got the job done for him. Four versus three now, 30 seconds left to go. And this is as good an opportunity as Bleed are likely to get on the attack. They don't want to see this go to 15. They want it now. Nova takes a ton of damage and Bleed can smell the blood in the water. They're circling like sharks. They're picking up one after another and there's the final kill. Aspy onto Nova and Bleed. They take us to Shale as these two keep battling against each other for that phase two spot in Manchester. Two maps, two maximum overtimes between Fear X and Bleed right here. We are going to use everything available to find out who is winning. We might even settle with a coin toss at the end. I'm not too sure. But that is a scoreline of 8-6. to six. Not quite the scoreline of 8-7 to seven that we got over on Oregon. But hey, who's counting? Still incredibly close games. And it does mean that we will be going to a third map for the second time here today on the a -string. Still smiles across both teams here as they know what they're involved in. They know how special the reward will be. They're looking to continue and play on Sunday. I believe uh, a, a real, you know, th th it needs to be said how big an effort that was from them. They were behind. They were 6-3 down. They've had to come back from three match points, yeah. series points. They fought their way back in and got to Chalet. That is a huge effort from them. And mentally, that's going to do quite a lot for them because Oregon, it was a very tough game. It was back and forth. There was a big break in the middle of it, which didn't really help anything either. And both teams had to deal and fight through that. So for Bleed to have that ability to fight through, don't forget they had an early, early game against Space Station today. Fear X on the flip side, they're, they're going to be entering their sixth hour of siege or whatever it is at this point. These guys have been grinding all afternoon from that game against G2. So both teams be, have been through the ringer today for very different reasons. But both teams are still significantly in the game and both fighting. And as you mentioned there, Bleed that mental fortitude to really buckle up and you can only imagine what those time arms from Julio were like. Yeah, I don't think either of these teams are going to struggle to get to sleep tonight. Oh, <laughs> they've put in a real uh, a real day of it today, but they keep delivering, they keep performing, and that in itself is so, so impressive from both of these teams. You know, they keep fighting, they know what's on the line, it's everything. They either go home or they continue on in the tournament. There is no in-between, there is no second chances now. This is it. We're going into Chalet, we've got one map apiece. They've both kept hold of their own maps. 
Firex taking Oregon, Bleed taking Clubhouse just now, and it will be decided when we get there. We've got our map stats just coming up at the end. We can see what a massive effort from Reeps there. 18 and seven, 93% cost across 14 rounds. Absolutely unreal performance. Reeps also got the Monster Award yesterday as well. He had a fantastic fixture um, earlier on. I believe it was probably in the CAD game. Um, and, and that was something that we thought was definitely of note there to uh, to highlight. But let's see how he performs over in Shelley. We've got another map coming up. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back after a few.
welcome back to what is turning out to be an absolute banger here at the Manchester Major. It's our last matchup of the play-ins, the last matchup of phase one, and it is Bleed versus Fear X. We've had Oregon go to Fear X. We've had Clubhouse go to Bleed. And now we find out who takes it all on Chalet. We've also had both maps go to an overtime so far. Reaps is a player certainly worth highlighting here, Ace. One of the standouts definitely on Clubhouse and one of the reasons that Bleed were able to get it over the line so far in the series. He is 28 to 17, plus 11 right now. Not only that, he's picked up four kills on the entry and has maintained a 77% cost. Now, those are impressive stats, but remember, put it in context, both these games have been overtimes. We've had a 15 round, we've had a 14 round, so to have that level of consistency over 29 maps, uh, 29 maps, imagine. 29 that rounds. like my first two days in Manchester, to be <laughs> fair. Oh, to have that consistency over 29 rounds, very impressive indeed. However, we're now in the best one. Best three doesn't matter anymore. We might have had two close games, but so what? We're going into Chalet, and this is where we decide. Likely to see uh, attackers coming away with not necessarily an advantage, but we know they don't have the hardest time of things on Chalet. Um, but honestly, I think this one at this point is going to transcend between defence, attack. I just don't think it's really going to matter. Uh, you know, it's more about the teams, it's more about the players, it's more about at this point probably, given how much they've played today, who wants it more? And I can tell you, they both want it a hell of a lot. It's just going to be who can translate that into performance inside of the server. Yeah. Both teams have already played a full best of three to get to this point. Both teams already went three maps in those best of threes as well. So they've played a heck of a lot of Siege today. We are just approaching quarter past nine local time here. So it's not too late, but they've had a fairly early start and it's been a fairly stressful day. They're playing for a chance to get into phase two and this is where it all comes down. Your ex only had to beat G2. Well, like, they, yeah, I mean, and Bleed only went up against SSG. Like, what's the fuss what's about? What's the big deal? What's the fuss? Gonna have our operator bands coming in there. Gonna be Ying and Monte taken away first. And we will continue that through with Bleed taking the first defender out on Shallow. It's gonna be interesting to see what the defenders are. Uh, we're gonna have Tuberau. So we saw Tuberau band out uh, in the last one as well. We've actually seen quite a lot of Tuberau yeah. use here in Manchester so far. Uh, you know, very much focused around delay tactics. We've seen a lot on bank, delaying those hatches being open here. I'm looking towards basement, thinking about, you know, all the breaches that you wanna be getting down there. And then the Solus, pretty much a staple ban um, lately being taken away super powerful again a lot of vertical destruction available here on shall you can play underneath for a top floor site play yourself in dining in kitchen look for those denials you can vice versa you can play upstairs when it's a dining kitchen site look to work downwards so much that you can do with that source it's difficult as well because i kind of feel like we've not seen enough fenrir ban in this series it's only something that's come to my attention now as we enter the final map and we see, see the bands again. We haven't seen a Fen, and, and Fens have been so devastating for both sides. Whether it's been, you know, pushing in from, from Bleed's point of view with Fear X playing the Fenrir or vice versa. Um, it has been quite a large focal point and then Fenrir again will slip through that ban phase and be a tool in Fear X's arsenal that they can use here as they start off on the defense. Okay, it's going to be gaming, so it's going to be trying to hold on Ten to library, remaining. mezzanine, blue stairs, and keep that trifecta in place oh, for as long as possible. We can see the utilities there already. The with my magnets to try and prevent the push coming in from sort of top ivy maybe getting into office breaching the wall having the long angle down towards the shield there just making it as difficult as possible for the attackers to play in there interestingly demic is setting up inside of office on the fenrir he's got the rotate out towards mezzanine so it may well be that he starts the round in there quite aggressively um, and looks to play towards that site to begin with Hoven, seeing if he can get any value out of that shock drone now. He's going to send one up onto the balcony as well. Always cautious of the Fenrirs and when they can be activated. And for the most part, Bleed just seeing if they can find a nice little outside to in kill here as the defenders make those rotations in the site and in the building. You can start to open up a lot of those exterior windows and often catch yourself a juicy little snack as you find one rotating from one part of the map to another. 
For the moment, though, everyone fairly dug in on the side of Fear X, not being given too much reason to move. Turd might have something to say about that, though. He's going to be on the day, Moss. He's got quite a few options available to him as well. I think all but one of these defenders have been scanned out. Reaps, though, he's going to be the tip of the spear as he pushes into Piano right now. Turd knows there's one above him as well. And just going to try and pre-fire through the floor, see if he can get an accurate pinpoint as to where this player is. Isn't going to be quick enough. Reaps instead will find an opener there onto Demick. It's surprising that they've been allowed to take that much control. We're well, getting themselves the, the dream start, really. Exactly what they would have wanted here. Picking up the Fenrir. Uh, they're going to be stuck with whatever FNATs are activated at this point. If they can be taken down, nothing can be switched. So it's just going to give them maybe a little bit more freedom once they try to get themselves in and take in space. But at the minute, they still haven't got that ground established inside a library. We've still got Good Boy here in library box. We've still got one out on Mezzanine as well. So still work for Bleed to do here. Fear X are able to keep holding on. The flash comes in. The prediction of the push towards the window. Just going to deploy that Kiba barricade in time, but Turd manages to find Nova. Five versus three now. Bleed can start using the manpower, but what a beauty from Mezzanine. Just picking up Hoven at the main door, saying you will not enter the building. Reeves has really pushed his way through here. He's now got to Ivy Double. Can start to further this press, and Mentalist is going to join him now and see if there's anyone that they can try and pinch. Gets an immediate trade down as Aspie finds one as well. Rin, is he going to try and make this long, arduous push? Up the fireplace stairs, no, instead gets himself back to sight, but the death mark is immediately upon him, and Turd is able to shut him down. Good first round then coming in for Bleed, managing to lock it out. It was maybe a little bit closer than they might have liked. They got themselves a good advantage, five versus three, but Fear X were able to fight their way back into it, uh, almost leveling things up at times. But Bleed managed to get the all-important round on the board. As we said, uh, the attacking half may not be too punishing for Bleed. They may be looking to come out of this with a little bit of an advantage before heading into the defence. And certainly got their account underway with 1-0 start. This time, Fear X are going to be heading up to the top floor. They're going to be looking to defend the master and office. Uh, so again, there's going to be maybe a little bit of a presence towards kind of Ivy area. They'll likely give up a lot of library. They might play somebody in and around Mezzanina just to try and burn a little bit of time to begin with. Um, but it's going to be probably focused more on a turtle hole, maybe one underneath, somebody out towards Solar, uh, and just invite Bleed to, to try and push into them if they can. I don't think Bleed need to look to do anything too drastically different to what we saw then in round number one. I think that the Deimos is probably going to be a staple pick. One of the reasons for that, of course, is just how much destructibility there is on this map, especially when you're dealing with either of the top floor sides. Well, I guess either of the mid floor sides or the top floor side. There's plenty of destruction available. As is being demonstrated there by Nova, I guess. He's uh, going to be ripping through that with the old auto shotgun. It's uh, usually one to turn down a little bit whenever uh, whenever, whenever I'm playing and someone's on that weapon. I usually just knock the volume slider down one or two notches because it is quite obnoxious, but he's going to give himself a lot of lines of sight there in toward library and make it very difficult to really get in and just hang around in library. It becomes less uh, somewhere that you would look to try and take and hold in the attacker and more of somewhere that you're going to try and transition through. Saying that, Reaps has already got himself in and is looking to hold those lines of sight for himself. Nova just going to be using the Maestro cam, try and feed any intel, but I think just trying to shoot out any gadgetry as well, potentially looking for drones there, manages to pick himself one up, anything else that comes in may well be able to catch. Uh, going to have the mute targeted as well, Method able to stay in this position for the time being, the bees are going to ping him out this time though, managing to get deep enough down the stairs, but the question is, is there anybody there to do anything about it? You can put those bee canisters in from the grim all you want, but if you're not going to back it up, if you're not going to follow it through, you can't spend in that use utility for no return. Demick manages to pick an opener up, taking down Turd. That's the Deimos off as well. We know how impactful Deimos can be in the late round, so that could be a big loss for Bleed. Mentalist just having a little bit of skirmish there. He's going to take a few points of damage, but it's Reaps again. He's just on a tear on this book. We highlighted him coming into this map, and I've got a feeling we might be highlighting him at the end as well. Able to take down Good Boy up on that top floor. Do a little bit of much needed clearance. Can now start to skeleton key open that wall. Mentalist, he didn't win his engagement downstairs, and he knows as well as anyone that that was a mute. So he does need to be cautious about the threat of a C4 here because that mute hasn't been cleared, and Rin is still allowed to 
nice play down there. There could be information. We've still got about, we've still got Maestro cameras knocking about. So there's a very good chance that he will be called out. Nova, he's going to be able to take Reaps down there on that Maestro. Really big kill there from Nova. It can be a tough position to hold Campiano. He's got the keeper barricade to help him, but just manages to cover that swing on Ivy Door. And who else better to take down? We've said already how impactful Reaps has been, not just today, but yesterday as well. Having a fantastic tournament so far. And every round that you can get him off the board is going to be a bonus for your team if you're Fiorex. So real Jack big play from Nova. Rin manages to pick up Hoven. You said Rin has gone undetected, has been able to move around freely so far. Does exactly that, comes back up, hits on the long angle. Beautiful kill, 15, 15 seconds, seconds left to left. go. And Bleed are just going to have to push this. Mentalist looks to find one. It's yeah, likely to, to be a meaningless exit kill as he tries to push around the corner. The kill comes in from Nova. He's held piano fantastically well there as Nova. And that gets Fiorex another round. A little bit of indecision there from Mentalist. He knows that Rin's below on the mute. He has a bit of a skirmish, but then has to come upstairs because of the man that Bleed had lost a little bit earlier on. Now, you look at Nova's position and you think, well, how do you deal with someone there inside a piano? You open the piano window behind him because that then yep. allows you to <laughs> stop him from playing in that position. So maybe Reap's got a little bit too far ahead of the pack there, pushing on to Ivy Double, perhaps a little bit of overconfidence. Look at the smile on these guys' faces. They absolutely love it. It's map three, it's an elimination game, and we're still getting smiles. We're still getting thumbs up from this Fear X squad. After what must be uh, nearly a seven hour day now, I think. That's how I'd be feeling. Eyes closed, head in my hands, I'd be thinking, oh my goodness, this is just, this is so stressful. This is going so long. And on the Fear X side, it's all smiles and waves. The thing is, you know, you've got to find that energy from somewhere. You've got to, at the end of the day, you'll finish off the match. You'll go back. If you've got the good result, you're not going to remember the bit where you were tired. You're not going to remember the bit where it was a long day. You're just going to get your head down and then you're going to be back to practicing tomorrow and ready for phase two. So, you know, as far as these guys go, I think they've got the right approach. They've got the right mentality. You just got to keep pushing forward. Got to keep that mentality, keep that energy up and it's going to help play, hopefully buy you a few rounds along the way. Seems as though we do have the issue resolved. I believe it was a headset problem. So hopefully, I, I don't know, maybe we swapped the headset out. Who knows? But it's good enough to get us back into the game. I can see that the game has started and we will be entering where we left off. Start around number three here. We're going downstairs into the garage. Ferex finding success up on that top floor, but not wanting to push it. They're not wanting to go for that kitchen site again. They're certainly not going to want to go for bar just yet. That doesn't seem to be a sight in their rotation or in their future right now. Instead, down to the basement we go. The question being, of course, from the defenders of Fear X, is it going to be a full map hold? Is it going to be just try to hold on to site itself? Maybe rotate out of uh, trench into boiler, try and aggressively hold that area. At the minute, it looks like there's going to be a presence throughout the map. Certainly in dining, we've had uh, the vision blocker going in there to prevent the drones coming in and seeing whether there's anybody there or not. It's going to need uh, a face check or at least sending the drone in there where it's then likely to be taken out. So there is as well a presence up on the top floor from the defenders. That's going to be to support the player inside a dining because another alternative is you just send your book in through office door open up the floor just inside of the door there and you can get the angles down onto the player inside a dining so you can clear it out with ever without ever actually going in there and that's why you've got to have a player up on the top floor you've also got our players ready to rotate back because that wall has been opened in quick sharp time and if we find well if we find out how light that site really is we might start to see Nova getting a little bit overwhelmed down there. He is on the Warden, so he can avoid some of the stuns, some of the smokes that are coming through. But it does look like quite a fast push in toward getting both of these walls open. Good boy, however, we'll find an opener there onto Reaps. Yeah, it's going to be in that position, as we've discussed in dining, it's going to be a key win criteria for Bleed, realistically, getting that open unless they choose for the front-sided push. But given that Asfi is moving around to Trench, that suggests they're going to try to open up the rear side. If the plant's going to go down in wine, they have to have control of the hatch. They can't leave Demic playing up there. For the time being, Turd is going to be targeting out the Fenrir of Mephi. He's out on solar stairs at the minute. He's the one that's trying to support Demic from above, and he's being forced back by this play. Just nearly gets caught out of a trophy window, but battles his way across. 
Demic is still there. This is going to be a key fight over the next 20, 30 seconds. The fact that Mephi's been allowed to go back to site that way is fantastic for him. Because if he goes down West Main stairs, he's got the chance to get a taken out from Trench. That hasn't happened. Asfi, he's been able to trade back over there onto Good Boy. The Azami has been removed. And you start to think that Bleed might have a little bit of an opportunity here. They haven't really cleared that top floor just yet. I still believe that Demic, oh no, Demic has actually dropped. He's now going to be playing inside of Blue. So the hatch is going to be free for the taking right now. But it's all about, do Bleed know that? It seems like they do. Turtska's got himself in there. He does obviously still see the vision blockers, but he's got a bit of information Attack to suggest he's probably on his own right now. There's still a lot of work to do if they're just going to try and brute force this hack. Nova's going to find Hoven, and that is perfect for FearX as time is ticking down. 25 seconds left to go. Lee are just going to have to send this at a point. They're going to have to go in. They haven't cleared out Pillar yet. That's going to be a big danger. The positive thing for them is that hatch at the minute. They can use that, but they could really do with the extra gun downstairs. Demic, he manages to find one, does he? No, gets taken out. Turd and Asfi one apiece. They really needed something out of Demic there, FearX. Five seconds left to go. Asfi, he can get this down. Turd is there on the cover as it comes around he can't find his man though surely that is the round what an important fight there that is won out by Rin and Mephi absolutely beautiful stuff from Fearx holding on there the nick of time in the 2v2 they get it done and they go 2-1 Really came down to the clock there for that one. And again, it's a good example of just sitting back and letting the round happen to a point where you have to react. And Fearx did just exactly that. I think Bleed got caught a bit short. They didn't have anything to deal with those Azami barricades with. Okay, Azami got taken out relatively early, but the barriers, the keeper barricades, they do remain. And there wasn't anything serious to try and deal with that. They had none of those big impact operators that you often speak of. It was quite a bland lineup. You've got the Deimos, that's about as fruity as it gets. Yes, but you've not got the Flores, you've not got the Ying, you've not got any of these tools that you might want to try and use, you've not got a Grim. There's loads of stuff out there, and they paid the ultimate price for it there. Fear X holding on down in the basement. They can now go and have another go up in this mid floor site. Yep, down in the kitchen will be ours for round four. Yeah, Fearx trying to hold on, and again, there's going to be a top floor presence from them. It's going to be much the same as a master office hold. Five they want piano, remaining. they want solar, and they want office for as long as possible. By contrast, what do the attackers need to do? They need to get in there and open that office wall, really. I'm a little bit concerned on the hard breach situation here. They've got Turd on the ace. He's somebody who wants to go looking for kills, that much is for sure. If he gets a little bit over aggressive and they lose that ace, they've got no other alternative. So it's really important that Turd recognises the importance of those gadgets. I'm sure he will. He needs to go in, open up Office Wall to prevent the hole directly above, and then open up the Site Wall. They've chosen to do it in reverse, but they just need to be careful they don't get caught out with that verticality. Well, it looks like the office wall is going to, sorry, the downstairs yeah, wall is going to get opened nice and easily, but you've got the verticality now, and you've got, you're only left really with a hop through and one Selma device, one Selma device to try and get rid of the player that's going to be on that half wall inside of office. So, mentalist maybe could do to get himself on that upside down repel. We've also got a class to contend with here as well. So whilst Bleed have maybe skipped a few steps there, and it's not unforgivable, they've still got the hardest work yet ahead of them. And that's where I say you've got to open that office wall breach first. You get that open, and then the mute isn't able to do that. They were lucky, really, that the Selma yeah. was able to double detonate the first one. They could well have lost it without even a walkable rotate at that point. So they've kind of got on away with it. But like you say, it could be a mistake that comes back to bite them later on. A minute and a half through the round, not able to find a kill yet. Fearx, they've got themselves dug in. Two still above. This has to be cleared from bleed because otherwise the verticals are going to be so, so telling in the late round. And every second that that clock ticks by, the clash just gets a little bit more powerful and a little bit more annoying. Rin doing a great job of keeping themselves out of bother now. They can just sort of float around and gather a little bit of information. Asfi going to try and make something happen here. Conscious that player on the half wall, Turd nearly had a chance on to Rin there. He's got himself just onto the lower portion of those library stairs. We're going to see the bees sent in now as well. As Good Boy takes a good few points of damage. What do they know about Mephi? Well, they certainly do now. He's been caught out on the drone, but he's single-handedly stopped them from repelling in. Is he going to be able to find the kill? No, runs out of ammo! A one-for-one one there as Nova swings on to Aspic. Please, we're going for a 3-2-1 there, and Nova eventually will be taking on out. A class kill from Turd as he takes the head. 
Oh, good boy, leaving us in a four versus two. That was the second of a double for Turd upon the top yeah, floor. And what, uh, just a 3-2-1 moment that has been from Bleed. Just to all push in at the same time. Aggress, take that top floor control, and it leaves Rin trying to work back up. The timing just not with them at the minute as they look to pick up that kill, but are unable, just moving around away to behind the corner. And there's an opportunity now for Hogan to get that diffuser down. Exactly what he's going to try to do, but it's going to be cut short by Reeps. And... We can we see go. the uh, bit of communication bit of coming in between the teams now as it's all getting down to the sharp end of it. We've played a lot of Siege today. We've played a lot of Siege in this game. And both of these teams know now that this is getting down to any advantage you can get, whether that's getting <laughs> into the heads, whether that, you know, whatever it can be. Whatever it be takes. The difference maker. It's 2-2. I like the top floor clearance from Bleed there. Fearex felt a little bit unlucky. Those, he was trying to hit the shots on the repelling and they just started hitting the... He went behind the frame of the unlucky? window. Is it unlucky? Is well, it skill issue? You've got to sort of take your finger off the trigger, I think, at a point there. I think I need to wait for him to be wait coming back. Come in, yeah. You've only got 19 yeah. bullets. You've not got a lot of ammo in that mozzie. You've really got to play it pretty cautiously indeed. It's the most vocal we've seen Bleed so far as well. It is. They've been pretty giving quiet. a lot of respect away to Fearx, and, and Fearx deserves the respect. But usually Bleed are that team that are stood up shouting and all. I mean, I know they were in the SSG game. There was a roll to of toilet roll that was getting passed around. I think it was. Uh, that was uh, that was something that was going on in that game as well. So the banter was certainly flowing, but. Bleed have definitely been a little bit quieter in this fixture. That much is for certain, but there's certainly time for it to amp up a little bit as we are only in round five. And surprise, surprise, it's 2-2. Two -two. There's nothing separating them. To consistently bring in the Deimos as well. Uh, as we've said, you know, such a powerful operator gets more and more so as the time ticks by in the round closer that you get towards the end, especially in those sort of 3v1, 3v2 situations you often find at the end of rounds. It makes it very, very uh, oppressive when those tracks start coming in. So for the time being, Good Boy is going to be playing underneath in and around Kitchen. Uh, it's a gaming and bar site this time, so he's just preventing any horizontal push coming across. I would imagine we've got the setup in Library and Mezzanine, and at the minute bleed, just trying to get themselves into the map, but Mephi just holding on to Solar Stairs is proving to be the sticking point right now. Hoven going for a little bit more of a direct approach there with the bees, just to push Nova back a little bit and maybe allow Reaps to hop in upstairs. It's a very light hold here inside of Library, considering that the site is directly below. And who better than the bug to be getting in and starting to rip open a little bit of that floor. The hatch is actually fully reinforced as well, so there was never really any intention to play in there from Fear X. Instead, they were going to try and play elsewhere, but that hasn't really worked out for him too well either. Look at Hoven's positioning right now. There's a chance he tries to get the plant down here. Just picked up a big double walking in there, and that's turd backing him up as well with one onto Rin. Bleed looking like they're going to take round five with a minute and a half yeah, left on the clock. The diffuser's the already planted, and Mephi is having to fight back in. But if you remember, I said at the beginning of things how powerful that Deimos becomes at the end. And yes, he may well have got the kill onto turd, but his position had been revealed, and the trade was there immediately. And in a 2v4, it makes it an absolute nightmare. You've got 2v4, you've got two people trying to work their way back, and one of them is constantly pinged to the enemy. Deimos, so, so powerful and well used by Bleed in that situation. Great round from them, 3-2. A quick round from Bleed too. Yeah. They weren't afraid of getting in Hoven and committing not quite about. quickly. Hoven was happy with what he saw on the drone and didn't waste any time getting in there. Surprise and see them give away library so quickly as well. It sort of begs the question of where were they trying to play because Hoven just walked himself in. Look, he picks up one, he picks up two. He should never be allowed to get that player inside a stock and that's be on the final it's two as well. Season, yeah, there it is. They're gonna start getting more vocal as the rounds keep going. You just wonder if one of these two teams, as we've said, you know, it's been a long day for them, a long day of siege. Bleed already playing SSG today um, and taking a loss. Fear X taking a win against G2, but both big games against big teams, a lot of intensity in them for different reasons. They find themselves here now. We're coming up towards 10 p.m. It's like we said, a long day. And you just wonder, is there going to be that cliff for one of them that, you know, they're going to go over and we're going to just see 
Things starting to slip away from them at the minute. Bleed have got themselves a couple around. Their energy doesn't seem to be a problem. They're getting vocal and really piling the pressure on. And you just wonder, it's Fear X. I think time to pick a round up now. They need to send a return message here. Absolutely. 4-2 split would look quite devastating at four bleed. And maybe it's on the cards. Rin, he's going to fall early. The wall. It is going to get stopped, actually. I think an impact potentially there came out and just stopped that from fully going off. Still an exothermic here in pocket, but you don't really want to be uh, risking that one at all. I think you're trying to get it embedded in now. If you remove some of the soft surface that is on the uh, on the wall, you can... I think the, I think the reinforcement is actually cleared. Uh, oh, there it is. Yeah, we get a bit of view of it with this with the zoomed in scope. Soft wall. So they've got their line of sight in there. Aspi knows that there's one playing on the bomb chassis. Uh, so he's just going to hold that angle for the time being. He needs to be careful, though, because it's a common free fire if you peek around onto the breach. Mentalist seems to be a little bit careful there. There was a player on his left. We saw the silhouette, and he sort of left his flank exposed there as he went back up the stairs, but Nova didn't really have an opportunity to peek around. I don't think he knows that Mentalist has gone here. He's still very concerned about the potential of that blitz. And right now, Mentalist is just making a nuisance of himself. He's clearing utility. He's pushing everybody and anybody, but it hasn't worked out as they've managed to stand up to him really well in blue, but the kills come in elsewhere. Turn and reaps. How many times are we going to say their name? They're just getting kill after kill after kill at the minute and keeping bleed on top of things. Three versus two. And there comes the Deimos scans again to make it more and more difficult. Reaps has found three in the round here. You've got to question the play from Mephi there. He's gone ahead of the Kiba Barrier. He's gone ahead of the Vulcan Shield. And I guess so's good boy to a degree. Really giving themselves away quite softly. And look at how much time's left. There's nearly a minute on the clock here. You've got Turdster. He's got the Deimos waiting to go. He's just waiting for that thing to charge up and he can send it on toward Demic. And Demic, there's not much that you can do, mate. There's no mute in play. You can't hide away. You are going to be exposed and that information is going to be exchanged. The Vendetta, it is going to rip through the Kiba Barricade. Demic, full white flash right now. It's a matter of time, surely. You can see the crossfires coming in there. He was scanned. He was flashed. He had everything stacked up against him. It was going to be a big ask. It was Turd ultimately that managed to finish it off as well with the Vendetta on the Deimos. Bleed have got so much value out of that operator over the last couple of rounds. Done really well. As I said, in the late rounds, you know, he's just on sort of a, a almost a power creep as the round goes on. He yeah. gets more and more um, aggressive, more and more impactful. And we've seen exactly why. Just used to the perfection by Turd over the last couple of rounds. So that is going to lock out our first first half of things. Bleed managed to get 4-2 on the attack. Not too unusual for Charlie, but you wonder now, coming in on the defence, are they going to be able to lock a couple of rounds out? If they can get this first one done and go 5-2, you start feeling like, you know, maybe the maybe the mountain's too big for VRX to climb. I'm pretty sure that Bleed won the coin toss and chose to attack first as well. So that's really gone well for them. They wanted that side, they got that side, they came out with a favourable split. Now they've given themselves a slightly easier ride of things. They're three rounds away from phase two right now, but Fear X is going to be standing in their way. They're going to look to use a lot of the old tricks that we've seen already Five this evening. Left. They're going to be bringing the glass. They're going to be bringing that blitz, and they are going to be trying to cause a nuisance. The one thing that I will say, I don't feel like anyone from Fear X is firing right now. There's no one standing head and shoulders. There's no one that's had that big moment. Whereas in previous maps, we've seen Mephi have big 3Ks. We've seen them have clutch moments in between. We've seen them one player streaking away with kills. That isn't happening on the side of Fear X at the moment. And it has to happen soon. Going to have a breach opened immediately at that front side, so that's going to be at least a phantom pressure, if not a little bit more. Last time we saw them playing around that breach, just trying to um, apply some pressure directly in towards the bomb chassis. It did a lot of good work for them. Mentalist was pushing elsewhere on the blitz. Um, but PRX, whether they go down the same road or not, they do have the blitz on side, and they did stick around the main breach. So for the time being, they may well, but Reaps, he's really feeling it. He's right up at that window, he's ready. But look, the, the push Attackers might well just come in and take all those Romas out of the game. There's three of them off site at the minute. They could just go in here and look to get a plant down. Nova's going to rush in with the blitz. He's looking to just make a nuisance of himself inside a wine. Really, what he's doing is he's buying time for Demic, and that Attackers has been achieved. Demic gets the 
job done. He gets out, and now Mephi can hold with the glass. That's a great plant from Fearex. Fantastic. They just need to retreat back now and get themselves to a pocket of safety. Reaps has a chance here, but he's just going to get taken out. Aspic, he takes Mentalist down in the Toxic Smoke. There's only so much of a wall you can build with those Keeper Barricades. You've got to be looking the right way. Good boy picks himself up too. A very aggressive round from Fearex. Bleed. They were thinking they'd gone to sleep there, and all of a sudden, Fear X, they rise back up. They got a second win for the party. Where the diffuser was planted made that really tricky as well. Uh, it was a great plant spot, a little bit of a risk from Demic because it's out in the open, but they have the smokes in there just to prevent those lines of sight. If you plant in behind the bins, it's kind of difficult to, to swing around the breach, and you're kind of exposing yourself to challenge onto anybody. You can maybe tuck yourself away. You've got a little bit of a drone hole issue, but you can get a little bit of cover to try and disable that diffuser. But where it was, bang out in the open. You got Mephi, you got Good Boy just waiting. Arms wide to take anybody who came in there, and they did. Fearex, really important round. Get themselves back within one successful first attack. This time, they're going to be attacking onto Game and Bar. You like fun facts? Love a fun fact. Fun fact. The opening pick has been converted, which means that the player that has got the opening yeah, pick, you, that team has then gone on to win the round in every single round Five bar days, one. And that is the previous round. It was a trend that we were seeing. The team that got the opening pick, they yeah, came away with the round. We call it an opening pick conversion. However, yeah, Mentalist, he got the first kill in that last round. It was said that Aspie got it, but it was Mentalist that actually downed the player. And then Fear X go on to win the round. So a little bit of a book of a trend that we've seen so far in this fixture. It's probably one that will continue because both teams do quite well from ahead. And Shally is a map that you can tend to snowball on quite nicely. Fearex continuing the trend of moving quickly at the beginning of rounds here. We've got already utility being thrown in uh, towards the site window, clear off any potential, the cross mats that could be under there, for example. Get rid of those, make sure it's not something that you need to be worrying about later in the round. We now sense. know that there's one inside a library and that is going to be the next job to deal with. They do have another nade in the hands of Mephi. Could send it in through the single window over the top of the bookcase, but it could well be that that's covered by a Wamai Magnet or an ADS. Ideally, you want a to try and do this, but again, you've mentioned the Wamai. That isn't going to help you against, uh, sorry, the, the Wamai is going to help you against the Capital there. Look at Hovland with the aggression. He's going to place a key of Barricade down and try and buy himself a bit of time. But we have seen a hop-in happen over inside of the library side. Asfi, he's going to detonate that C4 as he's getting tracked as well right now. He's essentially playing a position where he knows he is going to be taken out. It's just a matter of how much can he take with him. And the answer so far is one headshot onto Rinter. Finishes Nova off. Hoffman joins the party. This could be a flawless right now. Good point. The mirror window has been smashed from the other side. It's beautiful. He gets downed as well. And Demick taken on out. A flawless round for Bleed. What a way to respond. Yeah, absolutely. Perfectly timed there from Bleed. They just had Fear X in their pockets throughout that round. Round. And I'm just not sure uh, of Fearex's sort of use of the gadgets at that point, the utility usage. For example, using the Deimos track onto Asphalt as the mirror, you know exactly where he is. He's playing in the corner he's not library. Gonna move. He's not going to move at an absolute most. He's going to push himself <laughs> and drop down hatch. And even then, his location is not really going to help you other than to tell you, right, he's gone. But you, you probably know that because you'll hear him drop the hatch. It's, I don't know, I think you're just throwing utility at a problem for the sake of it then, rather than thinking, how is this going to get us that space? How is it going to get us that kill? It's not a Capito ball, nope. it's not a nade, it's not going to force him to move. Turd, I don't think Turd ever used the Deimos to get an opening pick or to gain space. It was always to isolate someone when they had an advantage. It's one of the key differences there in the way that that op was being used. And to be honest, yeah, they didn't have the, they didn't have the utility to deal with a player sat in that position. Sometimes you see a dock played there. We've seen docks stim heal themselves through Capitals. That's always an exciting one. As the mirror, you've not really got a lot. You've got the C4. But you've not really got too much to do. Once you've set your mirror windows up, you may as well play there because it isn't the end of the world if you're then sent to the cameras and you get taken out as long as you waste a bit of time or take something with you. The great round there from Bleed. Only two rounds away now. Look what Rammer in, Tim. So, so close. It's round, round nine. nine. So important, as I've said countless times, 
it really does give you that opportunity to pressure advantage to really put your opponent on the back foot and that's exactly what we need to do here they need to be ruthless at this point uh, and they need to make sure that they just get in this finish they cannot let VRX back at them here uh, you know every time that VRX come back it's going to buy them it's going to give them more confidence and that's something that bleed definitely need to be careful about Rin. I don't think he knows that mentalist no is idea. just inside of this window here but mentalist moves away he doesn't know either like passing ships in the night we're gonna miss each other who knows that someone's playing inside a back room though with the way that that window's looking i just i feel like he's just gonna try and hop in and i hope for his sake that the timing is gonna be good still trying to play out there and challenge on to that just destroy that keeper as soon as it's placed down mentally he's gonna try and deal with this himself but where are you looking pal that's not only giving an opening pick, but a chance for Rin to hack the cameras as well. Yeah, Rin was ready for that one. He knew exactly what was going to come. Just eating through Kiba barricades as well. Obviously, ammo may become a little bit of a factor for him at a point as he goes on, but still plenty in the pocket at the minute. About 50 rounds left for him, so he can keep chewing through those Kiba barricades. They are the perfect tool to be able to remove them. Question is... Can Fear X continue to remove bleed players? Yes, they've managed to pick up Mentalist, but it was on a jump out. Rin heard him go, and it was an easy one. They haven't managed to dislodge anybody yet. They haven't managed to disrupt this bleed team. They haven't been able to push them around, but the Otter might just be able to help them do that. Well, the Oster isn't going to do much helping, nope. but the Shield might do. The Shield is placed down inside a trophy, but often picking one up onto Mephi. Bleed have responded quite well. Demic now going to try and stun out and see if he can hop himself in. He's actually full white flashed himself on the way as turd. He takes down Rim. Demic has been allowed to get onto these solar stairs. But what's he going to be able to do from this position? Very quickly, he's left in a one versus four. He knows where one is upstairs. Hoven just tucked in there to master with that information being called. There's only one place that he can go right now. He either goes up or he goes down. Picks up a nice headshot there onto Hoven. But that's all it was ever going to be. An exit frag and a kill from turd to put bleed on a match and series point. Yeah, it's looking good for them at the minute. They've really got a bit of momentum behind them. It's round after round. They take round eight, round nine to get themselves on to that magic six points. And they now have three opportunities to close it out. Fear X going to pull the time out at this point, deciding that Dark needs to intervene and have a little chat with them. But I tell you what, it's... You can tell getting towards the end of a long day, even the laughing and smiling has stopped for Fear X now, and it's been a consistent, uh, constant throughout the day, really, for them. But they are really at the tough end of a long day, and they've got a big fight ahead of them now against a team, uh, particularly in third star, 14 and 4 at the minute. He's absolutely running away with yeah. this. It that round, it's kind of easy to look at and think Fear X maybe had an opportunity, but they didn't. They just got an opening pick on a jump out. They never really affected Bleed's defense at all. They never moved them out of master or office. They never took any ground away from them. It was just never really a threat of an attack from Fear X. It was strange that we highlighted, well, it wasn't strange, it was well-deserved that we highlighted Reaps coming into this. And it's been Turd that has stepped up head and shoulders and gone on and put up this performance. What we're saying, 14 and four right now. It's incredibly impressive indeed. Reaps is still doing well, he's nine and four, double yeah. positive. But it's everyone else is having one of those good games as well. Aspie's had some moments in the sun. I think Hoven's had some really important kills. He's only going five and five. He's, he's going even, he's covering his own losses. But the kills that he's getting are still very important indeed. <laughs> I'm sure he is. We'll be able to change them in a few minutes. Right, bleed. Six rounds to three right now. As you mentioned, Tim, they have a couple of opportunities here at getting this one over the line. Nice little clips like that, because it does Attackers give you a feeling. You know, we sit here and we you tell you, oh, it means a lot to these players. But when you get to see little bits like that, you get to understand that this is it for these players. They want to play at majors. They want to go as far as they can and get themselves onto main stage. And the thing is, you know, it's not an easy thing to do in terms of getting here to begin with. Uh, you know, in terms of the actual performances once you're here, it's, you know, a pressure cooker environment. It's yeah. constant for these guys. They're scrimming, they're practicing, they're playing. It's, you know, it's very, very full on for them. Often, you know, in an environment that's, that's not their own, they're in another country, different food, but, you know, there's a lot to adapt to all at once. Uh, you know, and they, and they do amazingly well with it.
amazingly well. Especially when you think of how many players return to majors. That just tells you how many people actually do it. A lot of people do it multiple times, but not a lot of people actually get to do it. Especially when you start thinking about getting onto main stage or doing that or going the distance. So it really does mean a lot. And, you know, it starts here. It starts in phase one for a lot of these teams. There's no reason why if they qualify into phase two, they can't make a run of it because once they get into phase two, it's a level playing field again. Here we go then, we're a minute in, we haven't had any kills yet. It's going to be a top floor hold from Bleed. And as I say that, Aspe opens it up. Hoven, Aspe, they have gone big at the beginning of the round and it looks like it could be all but done. It's going to take an absolutely gargantuan effort for Fiorexia to bring themselves back into it. Two versus five, they haven't even really got themselves inside of the map X. I said that maybe we'd see one of these teams just lose that momentum a little bit as time goes on and it's fear x that look like they've suffered to that bleed major advantage now five versus two after losing to ssg to drop down to the lower bracket they are on the verge of heading through to phase two reaps who else picks up the kill onto nova and it's all up to demic demic on the glass got a lot of work to do a whole minute and five players to go up against. You get the feeling he might not get past the first, but no, takes Hoven down nicely. That's location given away though, and there's plenty of runouts and things available for him to use here. Bleed are gonna get it done. Reaps to finish things off. What a series that player has had. Bleed can hold their heads high. They had more in the tank here tonight. They take Chalet 7-3 and lock themselves in for phase two. I'm sure that there's going to be teams looking at Bleed now and thinking we need a strategy to deal <laughs> with Reaps because he is an absolute nightmare. Turd, a great game, 14 and 5. Reaps still 11 and 4. Almost triple positive on the KD. The consistency. And it is the consistency. Yeah. He has been the constant for this team over the two days of the play-ins. Joel, Bleed, you're through to phase. <laughs> Two. I love how they take Joel through for the fist bumps. Like, no, you got a fist bump, Joel. It's only as polite. Well. It's only polite. You got to dap his, the team. dap his fin up. You know, <laughs> let, let him know that. Let him know that you're here. Um, commiserations to Fear X. They played an what, amazing. What an part emotional today. roller coaster of a day. Yeah. You knock out G2. You get yourself into that mindset, and then you go up against Bleed, and it's just, it, it's so devastating for him, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Uh, you know, you've got to think that your, your work is almost done when you've beaten G2. Yeah. Surely that's going to be the hard bit. But no, Bleed proving that they were the final boss and just really getting it done there on Shally. Honestly, what a series that we've just had. An absolute beauty of a game. A couple of overtimes to take us to a map three and then ultimately Bleed able to just take it away. Well, we can see the players starting to dismantle the setups now. They've gone through shaking hands and the the effect and the emotion and the moment can start to sink in now and Bleed can realise that they've done it, they've qualified in. There's only four teams that we get to send through into phase two from this first phase. 50% of the teams will go home. I do believe we have got an interview. I do believe we have got Reaps and Mentalist out there in the player booth. Guys, you guys just came out of a best of three. That was all the way... Stretching the nerves of everybody watching. How are you feeling right I'm just glad we got all of that alive, like, I was lie on the floor and just lie on the floor and just... I think as a team, we were, after we got pretty down, but all of us got back together, we talked and we're back. I think we played really, really well, even on the maps that we were picking up and towards the end, we're kind of back to where we were. And Reeps, you were the monster yesterday. You were. How are you feeling after those uh, going through? Um, honestly, I, I don't think my performance. Um, I I, I laugh, enjoy. I just talk, tell my team. Let's, let's do that, and then sometime my call just. And mentalist, tell me about Reap. So how it must feel like a, a proud moment, kind of of these guys. Right, I think throughout the year, I'm proud about my teammates, the, their growth. And they're showing me that they're capable of more and more. Like today, even like after we get smacked, after we're coming back, they're capable of elevating themselves under pressure. We both think. 
a player can have on this stage. As being part of Bleed right now, how does it feel going out of a match and then directly into the next one? Um, it's really hard uh, because this we all like we can submit. We just like one guy there. Work so hard. One guy there. Help! Oh, we die. Fourteen oh. CEO. I don't like who. What's happening? <laughs> of course, yeah. like we need to laugh it off, right? I think you can do to fix it. Just gotta laugh it off. Make sure the mentals fix as much as we can in the short amount of time that we got and that's sure that we're not too frustrated by the losses and we make sure we can come yeah and you guys have more games ahead of guys and uh, we'll throw it right back to the desk well there you have it a lot of happiness in the team going through into fifth of work for them it, really it must has. be a huge relief you can see you know on their faces i think how happy they are about it but also i'm sure it's taking its toll they're gonna need that yeah. rest day you can sense that relief can't you you can sense that sort of right we've done it we've got a rest day now we can take a little bit of a moment to breathe and it's how the frying pan into the fire because there's more games yet to play they're gonna be back on sunday it's only a couple of days away well this is it we talk about the rest day for them but what's that realistically it's gonna be day. now it's gonna be prepping it's gonna be scrimming if they can i'm sure it's gonna be doing everything they can to get ready for phase two because you've the work starts now really yeah. you know yeah you've got through this but now you want to go even further well that's it and there's been teams sat at home or traveling in the last couple of days getting to boot camps i mean they'll probably already be there but there'll be teams at boot camps that have been watching these games getting ready to come into phase two looking at these guys and thinking yep yeah, i'm licking my lips you know i'm waiting to get going you've got teams like bds there's all sorts of quality outfits that are going to be coming from all over the world Absolutely. Well, with the team going through, we have a C4 